I think my girlfriend has been trying to get me fired from all my jobs. I'm shaken. Please help me. I am a 24 year old man and I've been with my 29 year old girlfriend. Let's call her Janice for two and a half years I just finished my education when we started dating and i've been doing all sorts of jobs since sometimes two at a time I did this to expand my resume and gather job experience I worked in cafes bookstores a library a grocery store and as an english tutor Most of these jobs lasted about three to five months. My shortest stay was two and a half weeks my longest eight months But since I didn't have a hard time applying for new positions, I tried to block it out though it was kind of eating me up internally people called to complain about me people left bad reviews about me people use my employee wi-fi access to look up sketchy things on the internet under my name former employees called to inform them about me right name and all and much more subtle stuff that i couldn't disprove but i was too anxious to do anything about it i just told my girlfriend she comforted me and supported me every time i got my life ruined by these people but i kept going though they kept finding me Fast forward to this week. I currently hold a part-time position at a bakery. I've been working there for two months and a half. It's going okay, but my manager approached me about something regarding our Google reviews. Someone was complaining about an employee and their description could only really fit me. It was on a day where we were pretty short of staff, so I could have been the only person in the store on that day for all I know. Anyway, their review contained some pretty elaborate and nasty comments about me. This has happened on one or two of my jobs already. I told my manager that it was all pretty bogus and that someone had a vendetta against me as it's happened before. She believed me and told me that she'll dismiss the comments. On my break, I checked out the review myself. The username was kind of stupid. I'm not going to type it out here since I still work there, but I'll just call them Mick Myrtle as it was in the same range of sounds kind of fake, but not really. Anyway, I come home, but I don't tell Janice about it. She's heard it all before, so I didn't see the point in complaining about another time I almost lost my position. We chat, all is well, and she leaves the room. Her phone is on the table and suddenly she gets a notification or an email of some sort from Google. I don't remember what it said exactly, but the pop-up read something along the lines of Mick Myrtle, manager has responded to your review. My heart dropped. I've been trying to ignore it since. This was two days ago. It just fit in the picture of bad reviews. It fit in the picture of the phone complaints my workplace has received about me in the past. It fit in the picture of all the sketchy things I've been fired for. Why would she do that though? I'm looking for an explanation. This literally can't be. She's the only thing keeping me sane. I don't know what to do. And then just a couple of weeks after, we got this update. First of all, yes, we broke up. That's what I'll be referring to her as my ex from now on. Anyway, let's start from the beginning. On the Monday of the following week, I couldn't take the uncertainty anymore. I told my ex I needed her booking account to book a train ticket to visit my dad for a few days. She complied. And when she was in the shower getting ready for work, I booked my ticket and started looking through her emails. After some digging, I found an email to herself which contained a spreadsheet file. I sent the file to myself, printed it out, and took a screenshot. Why? Well, that spreadsheet contained about every single piece of information about me that there was. Numbers, emails, passwords, work times, colleagues, their numbers and social medias, as well as some emails and passwords that she used for accounts to ruin my life with. Everything was on there, conveniently sorted for her to ruin my life as efficiently as possible. When she left for work, I decided it would be best to immediately pack my stuff. Nothing that mattered would be left behind. I felt like a wanted man, like I was being hunted despite nothing being seemingly out of place. I called my boss, told her I'd be taking some time off from work and headed out to see my dad. Needless to say, he was the sanity I needed. I cried about everything I saw. I panicked for a whole two days straight about how my life was ruined and I didn't know what to do. He had to sleep on the couch in the guest room because I was so scared of my ex coming in. He handled it like a champ. I love you, dad. He called the police, a lawyer, and most recently a therapist for me because I was in the most horrible state of my entire life. Yeah, I don't blame you. We're currently sorting out the legal stuff. I haven't talked to my ex except for letting her know it was over and that she is a sick psychopath. My dad handled the rest. I changed all my passwords and now I'm looking for a place to live. Yeah, dude, you're absolutely right. Psychopathic is the word that comes to my mind. How sick and twisted do you have to be to do this? I don't even get why she was doing this in the first place. If you've got any ideas what her motive might have been other than just clearly being a sick and twisted individual, comment down below. Maybe she was unhappy at your jobs or something. But you know what? No, I'm not even going to try and give any logic or reason to explain her actions. They're inexplicable. What's she doing? incredible and also like that is gonna screw you up mentally and i'm not surprised that you're in a terrible place right now because i would be too the one person that you trust the most that you tell everything to 
she does this behind your back she's the one that's actually inflicting this damage on you and causing you not to have a job long term how is that going to affect you my brother awfully that's the answer your dad's a legend oh my god i can't quite believe what i've just read am i the jerk for giving my stepson a 20 minute time limit to return my car before i phone the police i am a 34 year old female doctor and part of my job entails being on call for one to three nights a week twice a month my fiance dale who is 30 has been saving with my stepson's mum to buy him a car for christmas my stepson rex who is 16 has a license already but always has to borrow his mum's station wagon or his dad's beat up pickup truck his mum's car is lame and embarrassing and his dad's can only hold one passenger not practical for a teen on to the main conflict rex texted me yesterday around 12 asking if he could borrow my car after school his friends wanted to go to the mall but the bus route is too long could they borrow my car i texted back as sorry but no i'm on call again can you ask your mum? he says no i told him sorry but my answer is still no i'm sure you'll find a solution though ask your friends and you can all figure it out if you see where this is going you're less shocked than i am I was up in my office, the room where I keep my switch, sewing machine and laptop, so not an official office, when I heard Rex and his friends downstairs after school. I was going to see if they needed anything, but they left after a few minutes. An hour later, I went to the kitchen, cleaning up the empty bottles and wrappers from their snacks. I saw the spot where I left my keys empty and I began to panic. First, I bolted to the door. My car was gone. I immediately dialed my stepson. He picks up and it's obvious he's in a mall store that's playing loud music. I told him to get his butt home now and he laughed and said that I'm not his mum. He'll be home whenever he pleases. Now, I'm not proud, but then I told him that he has 20 minutes to get home or I'll call the police and report my car stolen. Rex panics and said he couldn't find all of his friends and drive home in 20 minutes. I told him, tough. 10 minutes later, I get a text that he's in the mall parking lot and will be home soon. I phoned Rex's mum and informed her of his stunt. She was madder than me when I told her that I was on call. She apologized and promised to talk with Rex and Dale ASAP. Rex came in, threw me my keys, and locked himself in his room. Dale finally came home around 8 and said he'd been on the phone with his ex. He demanded to know why I'd punished his son. I put my foot down and explained that I'm on call. That means I need my car. Rex stole my car. But Dale disagrees. His ex agrees with me and decided that she won't be buying Rex a car anytime soon due to his entitlement. Dale thinks that I'm making a big deal out of nothing. I didn't end up going into work, so why did I have to threaten Rex? Well, I've only gone in twice this year while on call. But just because nothing happens doesn't mean that I'm always clear. Rex is now grounded. My fiance is barely speaking to me. He asked me when I'm going in today. I'm not. And if I'm going to apologize. I'm not budging and I'm still angry that he doesn't understand. So, am I the jerk? Now, I think we can all agree that the answer here is pretty obvious. Obviously, you're not the jerk. Your car was literally stolen. Of course, you're allowed to report that and then be angry at the person who stole it. doesn't matter who they are. But what is more interesting is the update and what happens next in this story. So, apparently, Dale reads through this subreddit on his work breaks. He texted me a link to my post during his dinner break. A short time later, I first received a call from Rex's mum, who said that Dale called her and ranted about how I made him look bad online. She told him that she doesn't give a flying F because he didn't react the way a good parent should. Dale was so furious that he told her that he'd be calling his mother to see if someone actually cared about his feelings. But Dale's mother handed his butt back to him good and reiterated to Dale that he was not an active part in his son's life until he was six, so he's got no leg to stand on. Dale tried to complain about how everyone was being unfair to him, but she shut him up and told him that his son did something wrong and this is not about punishing him for being a bad father. Dale returned home a little while ago, about an hour earlier than he usually does he looked defeated but he was still short with me he said he was disappointed that i posted and now everyone who knows will think he's a joke and a bad father i didn't think this conversation would end up with my ending the engagement and relationship but it did the house is all in my name so dale is packing up his stuff and crawling back to his mum's house the wedding wasn't set so no money or time lost there dale said so many things that i don't even want to write down this is not the man who i've known for four years and i'm honestly shocked at how selfish he is He said my doctor money would have to buy Rex a car to make up for all the hard feelings. I'm astonished at how delusional he is. I'm done with this account and will not be returning. So there you go. Uh, That is a story of how a Reddit post ruined an entire relationship. I say ruined. It's for the best, isn't it? I don't understand Dale's entire like thought process here. All right. So your son makes a terrible mistake, right? Steals a car. 
that's fine. That's on him. Yeah, it doesn't look great on you as a parent, but why is he going all selfish on this? Why is he saying that, oh, you're making me look bad as a father? It's not about you. Just punish him the way you should be punished for stealing a car and then just move on with your life. Like, he's your child. You've got to take responsibility. It's not about you, though, as a parent. Like, do your job as a parent, but nobody really cares. Like, you guys listening right now, when you were listening to the first post right there, were you thinking throughout, oh, Dale's a terrible man? No, didn't cross my mind once. It's just the dad. I expect him to punish him and talk to him and the same with the OP did. Now, up until that point when he didn't do that, it was all good. So it's on him is what I'm trying to say, I guess. I don't actually know that made any sense. I mean, what we've really understood here is that actually Dale is extremely entitled as well. The comment about the doctor money alone shows that. Um, so yeah, I guess something like this was always going to happen at some point. It's better that it did now and that you're not married to him. My daughter disowned my grandson. Well, I'm furious. This morning, my 16-year-old grandson showed up at my doorstep with a bag, looking like he just had the stuffing knocked out of him. He lives two states away and traveled by bus to get here. Why? Because my daughter decided the best way to handle him coming out to her was to toss him out into the cold. I'm so angry with her that I don't want to type out things that I will one day regret. But Jesus, I thought I raised her better than that. My grandson is currently sleeping in his new bedroom and I'm at a bit of a loss as to how to proceed from here. The poor child has just had his entire world turned upside down. But what do I say and do to make this right for him? He doesn't want to go back. My daughter, his mum, doesn't want him back. I'm absolutely fine with having him stay with me but there's a lot that needs doing more importantly what channels would i need to go through to make sure my daughter gets her just desserts i love her and i likely always love her but i raise them all to be accountable for their actions and nobody hurts my grandbabies and then just two weeks later we got this update my grandson is in therapy and has been enrolled at school he's been placed in my custody while cps proceeds my lawyer is handling all necessary paperwork and believes we have absolutely nothing to worry about our caseworker has echoed this i will not be discussing legal matters further my daughter is facing criminal charges for her actions child abandonment is a very serious crime Her actions reflect very poorly on her as a whole upon realizing that her income was being cut off and that she committed a fair number of crimes She instantly began to plead that she hadn't meant to and it had been a heat of the moment decision that she regretted Considering she's already thrown out all of my grandson's clothing and worldly possessions This defense did not hold up to scrutiny. My grandson is as well as can be expected He's made friends in the form of my neighbor's kids. They're around his age. We've really redecorated his room and he had a good time being allowed to pick out his own furniture and paints he's got on a ps4 which has become his escape he personally has made the choice to not join a group and i won't force him to do so we're talking about getting a puppy as he loves dogs but his mother never allowed him one and then one final update from a few months later my grandson is doing well He's made a few friends in the neighborhood and has bonded with his pup quite nicely. The two are almost inseparable, save for when he's in school. He's begun meeting with a counselor that offers online sessions. My daughter has been granted a plea deal, which she's accepted to avoid the full extent of what the courts would have otherwise given her. I'm told by my lawyer that this is a common occurrence in such situations in order to expedite proceedings so as to best see the child's needs. The charges against my daughter were dropped in accordance with the deal and she's been stripped of her parental rights. Due to much of what came to light during proceedings, a restraint training order was granted to keep her away from my grandson until he reaches his majority. We are moving forward with life. Now that court and other proceedings are winding down, I'm once more considering moving. Even with my grandson here, the house is just too big for us and the weather isn't as kind to my bones as it was when I was younger. My grandson is open to the idea and views it as a fresh start. This situation has allowed me to glean things about my family that I find very useful. The relatives that sided with my daughter and told her it was her right to do as she did as a God-fearing woman have been struck from my phone book. Unfortunately, I count another of my children in this list. Those who took my grandson's side, note it's very much his side and not my side, have shown themselves to be the good people I knew them to be. The wheat has separated itself from the chaff. I do believe this will be my last post here as there is just not much more to add, but I just wanted this lovely community to know that we will be okay. Wow, I cannot believe what I've just read. You know what is so baffling to me? The difference in generations. You've gone from OP, the grandmother, who is so open and is so supportive of her grandson. Then her daughter, the kid's mother, who is the complete opposite. And then, of course, the son himself, who has come out and had to deal with this rubbish. I mean, fair play to you, OP, for being so good and supportive. Because imagine if you weren't in the picture and this kid was just having to deal with his mum, who has literally abandoned him and disowned him. I, I just can't believe that. For his own sexuality. 
reality in 2022. Well, this happened in 2019, but you know what I mean. Hopefully with grandma, with therapy, with general life support from good people, this kid will be all right. It sounds like it's on the way back, but wow, what an ordeal to have to go through and then get disowned by your own mother. I regret leaving my wife for my girlfriend. I don't know if I have the right to ask her to take me back. My wife and I separated a year and a half ago. Before that, we were together for 15 years. 15 happy years. We have two daughters together, 14 and 12. The last two years of our marriage, I thought that we've achieved all that we could achieve. Nothing changed and we knew each other by heart. The pandemic years were hard on me mentally, being stuck at home 24 seven. I didn't know that at the time. I thought I was stagnating and out of love with my wife and that being home made me realize that instead of the truth that I was actually depressed because of being home all the time, albeit with her. When I went back to the office after two years, I thought my change of humor to the positive was because I wasn't with her instead of the fact that I could actually get out again. I met Anna, a 32 year old. She was one of the new people that we hired. Anna is free and happy, social and high spirited. She took the office by storm. She was the opposite of my shy and calm wife. I remember when I first met my wife, I was the one who asked her out and the first two years into our relationship, she confessed to me that she had liked me for at least a year before I asked her out. With Anna, she was honest and verbal about how she had a crush on me, like an open book. She proposed to me. I told her that I was married and she said that we only lived once and that she just wanted to tell me how she felt no matter if I reciprocated or not. I felt strongly for her. I confessed to my wife that I was out of love with her. She asked me if there was someone else and I said yes. That was enough for her not to try to dissuade me. I know that she was hurt and suffering in secret and I never tried to console her because I didn't want her to know that I knew how much she was hurting. Her pride has always been her dearest possession. I moved out a week later to Anna. I thought that I was going to be over the moon now, but there was something missing, even when I felt happy. I thought it was me missing my children and my home. I was used to being with my daughters every day and now I see them only half the time. I thought it was my daughters crying and not speaking to me that hurt me. I thought it was a disappointment in their eyes that disturbed my sleep at night. My wife was my rock, even in separation. She made sure that the girls didn't refuse to see me. She kept my image whole and always spoke to them about how I loved them and how good of a father I was. I knew she was hurting and I could see her missing me, but she never once lost her dignity. It was around Christmas when it hit me how much I really lost. Anna had surprised me with a trip to a warm destination because I was feeling down that this would be the first time I wouldn't celebrate with my daughters who chose their mother. Anna always understood that my blueness was because I missed my girls all the time and she tried everything to cheer me up. The night before we took our trip, I dropped by my wife to leave my daughter's presence. My wife opened the door and she just looked so serene. I lost my balance on an ice patch and she just said oops and ran towards me to help with the gifts. I caught a whiff of her smell and that was when it all hit me. I did miss my children and my home and my stability, but most of all, I just missed my wife. I missed her warmth, her voice, her calmness, her wit, and most of all her smell when I buried my face in her hair and neck on Saturdays when we could sleep in. I knew that I never really stopped loving her. She wasn't the reason I went through a dark period. She was the only light that pushed me forward. I've always missed her. I've tried to explain it away because I have this new brilliant girlfriend who is so different, who's teaching me how to be excited again. But every time, my wife's face is the first thing I thought of when I woke up in the morning and looked at the person next to me. And every time Anna kissed me and I closed my eyes to try and imagine my wife's smell, I pushed these thoughts away because I thought of how miserable my life had been during these pandemic years. My wife was putting up the Christmas tree and I asked her if I could stay for a beer. And she said yes. I started crying in our kitchen and when she asked i told her that i was missing the girls and how strange it was not to celebrate with them she comforted me and told me that everything would be okay and to have a nice trip change is never easy even if we wanted it now another christmas is approaching anna has booked a new adventure for christmas and i didn't even protest for the last year picking the children up or dropping them off has been what i look forward to just to see my wife's face i've noticed how she has become happier and more in terms with the changes and i envy her I wish I could just tell her how I feel, but I don't want to disturb her healing when she's come so far. I love her like I never loved her before, but I don't deserve a moment more of her life after what I did. And then just one day later, we got this update. I have now broken up with Anna. I feel such a weight lifting. Maybe it's not a nice thing to do. Breaking up with someone before the holidays, but I needed this for my own sake, but even for Anna. She doesn't deserve my resentment towards her since I'm the only one to blame for breaking up my marriage, but I can't help but resent her i can't help but think that i don't want someone like her around my daughters i hope she'll be fine and i wish her luck 
I'm not going to bother my wife. I probably need to be alone while trying to sort out my feelings and mental issues. I'm just hoping this would make my girls accept me and my home as their second. All right, there we go. A little bit of a sob story posted the true off my chest. Do we feel bad for this bloke? Get your comments in down below. I, for one, do not, unfortunately. I mean, look, I do a little bit because it's a bit of a tough situation for him. But all this happened because of you, my friend. Sorry. No wonder she's so serene right now, your ex-wife. She's probably at peace with the fact that now she can be with somebody eventually that actually loves her and wants to stay with her for her life rather than you that when the going gets a little bit tough, you're like, ah, a little young, more exciting thing at work. I'm off skis and I'm going to ruin my life with my family and my daughters just for this person. Maybe that's a little bit too harsh, but come on, like giving up this quickly on a marriage just because you were depressed during the pandemic. Like the majority of people haven't done that. For example, a lot of people felt very down in the pandemic. Did it mean they left their spouses though, did it? Come on. The comments on Reddit are kind of agreeing with me here. A lot of them are very harsh, more harsh than what I'm saying. Just saying it is completely this guy's fault and he's an idiot for this. But others are saying that he needs some form of psychological help because if he's always going to say and feel that the grass is greener somewhere else with a, you know, different woman, then he's never really going to get happiness, is he? And ultimately, nobody ever wants to feel like that despite it being his own actions everyone wants to eventually you know be serene and be happy and find comfort in your life so i don't think it's what he wants to do necessarily but maybe it's just a personality trait i don't know maybe we're giving him too much credit but he does need to sort himself out and he is aware of that now i just want to include one more comment that op made right at the bottom of this post i heard about reddit on a podcast i thought the quality would be better than this but I made good connections with some people who have had or had battled depression. So I'm taking this with a grain of salt and I'm grateful for those who listen to me. Pretty much what happened is he was getting called out in the comments for being an idiot. And he was like, no, it's not my fault. Why are my comments being deleted by mods as well when I'm just saying ridiculous things? All in all, I don't know if this guy realizes that he was the problem the entire way through. Bit of a sob story. I don't have a violin small enough for this one. Am I the jerk for telling my now ex-friend that she shouldn't be proud of being overweight? My friend, Tara, has always been a little overweight. And in the past, she couldn't accept it. She tried so many diets, but nothing lasted more than a few weeks. As, quotes, my love for food is so strong. A few years ago, she met a guy, and that was the hint she needed to get serious help from a professional doctor and to start exercising. I need to say, she looked stunning after a few months and was able to catch the guy. Let's say that the pandemic got the best of them, and after three long years of a relationship, he dumped her. She was devastated at the beginning. She regained almost all the weight that she'd lost previously, but after some time, me and other friends managed to make her standing again. She came back to hang out with us, and she flirted with some guys, nothing serious. In the meantime, another girl joined our group. Let's call her Maya. Maya is the kind of girl that's naturally fit and doesn't need exercising at all. And that's something Tara couldn't accept. She began teasing her all the time, saying things like, Hey, don't hug her too tight, you might break her. How can you manage to have sex? A boy could crush you. I'm glad I gained my weight back because I used to look like you. Or even, at least I have some meat they can grab. If a boy grabbed you, where would he put his hands? On your collarbones? Maya always tried to laugh it off as she was the new girl, but I could see her not being comfortable at all. Last night, after the umpteenth comments, I blurted a, at least she can fit in a pair of jeans. Tara suddenly fell silent as the rest of the group turned their heads on me. And I continued. You shouldn't body shame someone over jealousy. And you shouldn't be proud of being overweight either. You know that doesn't help your medical conditions. Tara stormed away and a few girls followed her to check on her. Everyone called me a jerk, saying that I shouldn't make fun of her for being overweight, nor should I bring up her medical conditions in front of someone that doesn't know her that much. Maya. I told them that it's hypocritical that they would scold me about saying that, something that's at least true, but wouldn't say a thing to Tara as she was body shaming Maya. So, am I the jerk? Now, before we tackle that question, first of all, OP's left a bit more information in this comment. Just so you guys know, I've talked so much about weight since that's the topic of this post. I had to explain the situation before telling the story, and I had to let you have a chance to understand why Tara was acting like that. In daily life, I do not concentrate on someone else's weight like this. To be honest, I don't care if you're fat or thin or half-half, as long as you're not a jerk. I did make some other comments to Tara before snapping, but they were too light to make her listen to me. Low blow, Tara, stop it. You're taking it too far, etc. Speaking about Maya, she thanked me a lot after the infamous dinner, as the whole time she didn't know how to answer to that comment because she felt like everyone would have judged her. She also felt like everyone was enabling Tara to say and do anything she wanted just because she would play the victim card whenever she needed to and was then sure she would have been excluded by the group if she stood her ground. 
Also, it seems like Maya had spoken to some other girls from the group about the situation, but they all answered things like, it's Tara. She's like that. Don't worry, at some point she'll get tired of it. And my favorite, well, you know, if we told her to stop, it might hurt her feelings. She's so fragile. All right, so so far I think it's pretty obvious that OP is not the jerk, but there is another update. This was added just a few days later. Tonight, I went to dinner at one of my friend's houses. Tara and Maya were there too. I knew that, and that's partially why I wrote the first post. As I arrived, I took Tara and went into a separate room with her. I told her I was sorry for what I said, but that I talked out of frustration. I also told her that I think her bullying Maya all the time is not cool at all and that she should apologize. She nodded and said that she totally understood my point of view, but she wasn't going to apologize because this wasn't the occasion. Everything seemed fine between us, even though I wasn't totally happy with her answer, and we went back to the others. Now, literally 20 minutes ago, we had dessert. Do you see where I'm going? As I was eating the first bite of my cake, Tara announced, As OP thinks that I'm fat, I decided to go on a diet, so I'm not having it. I almost choked. Everyone laughed out of embarrassment, not knowing exactly what to do or say. Then Maya turned to her and said, Well, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard you say. I'm writing this from the passenger seat of Maya's car. We both left the house because there's been a huge fuss after Maya's comment, and I finally realized that you don't have to hang out with people that you don't like anymore just because you were friends in high school. So thanks, Reddit. Wow, not gonna lie, I did not expect the story to end like that. It feels to me as if you've gotten rid of some old friends who aren't really your mates at all and just gained a new one for life in Maya. Good stuff. Uh, the whole story is pretty nuts. I do agree. Obviously, body shaming is not the one. Um, and you can't have it both ways. Like, yeah, if you've got someone that's overweight and someone that's underweight, or maybe you're not even underweight, just in good shape. It's not right for one of them to body shame the other and then say, oh no, but you can't body shame me back because I'm too fragile. Like, come on. Uh, realistically, if you're going to give it, you've got to be able to take it. Ideally, it wouldn't happen at all, but it does happen. Let's be honest. If you're going to give it, you've got to be able to take it at the other end. Now, the celebrating being overweight or, you know, being happy that you are overweight is a weird one. It's the same sort of thing, right, with these overweight models now. What do you reckon, guys? Get in the comments. It's a very contentious one. I'm not entirely sure where I stand on it. I do think that fitness and health and wellness are extremely important things. And maybe there is an argument to say that people that are overweight and are celebrated for it is a bad thing because there's no doubt that there are health implications to being overweight. Or could you argue? that people are overweight just generally and therefore why punish them for that by not representing them in modern culture i don't know it's a tough one what do you think the one thing that i will say is that it's definitely toxic for your friends to enable tara in this way to bully someone about their weight but then not allow it the other way i mean look it shouldn't happen at all and tara should have realized pretty quickly that what she was doing was bullying simple as that i found out my best friend has been using my pictures to catfish a guy she's been talking to since 2015 man i don't know where to go from here so i thought i'd go to reddit my best friend we'll call her maggie and i met our freshman year of college we're now roommates and moved in together two years ago just fyi guys this story was posted in 2020 in 2015 my best friend spent spring break a couple of states away and matched with a guy on tinder when she came back to campus she immediately told me about him and how amazing he was and how they only went out to dinner once this was obviously a lie but that they were talking 24 7. i got super excited and asked to see a picture that was the only picture of him she's ever shown me over the past five years he's literally been her whole world she talks about him constantly she always has her nose in her phone she gets clingy when he takes too long to text back she's cried to me a few times because she's lurked on his social media and seen he was around other girls my roommate doesn't have social media herself i'd asked a few times why they've never met up again and she said they're both too busy and don't have the money for the trip I even told her that he could stay with us and that would save some money. He sent presents and even flowers on Valentine's Day every year. They've basically been dating this whole time. So yesterday, my roommate picked up a shift at work and was gone. I get a knock on our door and I open it to a guy. He says hi and I give a confused hi? And then he barges in and scoots me up into a hug. He starts saying, I thought you were working. I was hoping your roommate was here so I could surprise you when you got back. And I'm so confused. I immediately get down and back away and let him know I have absolutely no clue what he's talking about. My brain can't even process what's happening. Then he looks confused and says, Maggie? And I'm like, no, that's my roommate. My roommate and I look nothing alike, so I'm even more confused. 
then something kind of clicks and i think oh my god is this the guy she's been dating so i say wait are you adam and he gives me a very slow yes and i get excited and say oh my god i bet maggie is gonna flip out i can't believe you're here his demeanor completely changes he asks me what i'm talking about i'm maggie and i tell him no i'm summer maggie's roommate at this point i'm still completely missing something that he's just pieced together he just says holy frick and he looks like he doesn't know what to say eventually he asks if he can sit down i invite him in he then proceeds to tell me that for the past five years he's thought he's been talking to me every picture he's ever seen of maggie has actually been pictures of me i'm completely dumbfounded and we don't know what to say to each other at first so he gets out his phone and shows me proof He has tons of pictures of me saved on his phone and went to their messages and showed me proof that she's been sending them to him I felt and still feel completely sick to my stomach I get out my phone and show him real pictures of her I tell him maybe they could just talk when she gets off work and he's so angry at this point I say maybe we should call her first and let her know he's here So I do that and she starts flipping out saying she's not coming home tells him to leave and that she won't talk to him He calls her and starts yelling at her over the phone. After everyone calms, she eventually comes home. He's hurt and accusing. She's crying. I'm sitting there awkwardly. She tells him that she's still the same person he's had feelings for and he screams at her. No, I thought I was in love with your roommate. And that completely makes her break down. So I tell him maybe he should leave for the night and everyone should have their own space. He agrees. And after he leaves, she goes completely psychotic on me and starts throwing trash around the living room. Tells me she hates me. I start crying. It's a mess. I left to stay with a friend and haven't been back, so I don't know what's gone down. I feel like I have no idea who the person I'm living with is and I feel weirdly violated. Do I move out? Do I try to call her? She hasn't even texted me. I don't know how to deal with this situation. And without further ado, let's get straight into the updates. Thank you guys for all of your advice and comments. Many saying you've been in mine or Adam's position. It made me feel better. I'm going to go ahead and just post an update because I don't think there'll be more of an outcome than this. I ended up having a phone call with Adam, mostly because I wanted to know about the pictures she sent. Turns out she sent pics of me and my underwear and nudes that aren't actually of me or her so we're assuming she got those from google he feels really bad and is actually having a hard time with all of this i assured him i don't blame him at all for the underwear pics or anything like that he ended up telling me that they actually have facetimed but she would never show her face only the top of her head her hair which is dyed a similar color to mine i never thought anything of this now i think it might be really weird and her excuse was she felt like she looked bad on video was self-conscious didn't have makeup on etc he said he didn't think it was weird i don't know he also told me he's tried a ton of times to arrange visits to me and she's come up with excuses every time he said that he's been mostly content to talk through text or over the phone up until this point he also said he's going to try to reach out to her one more time to talk about everything but that he's moving on as for me i'm not sure i can break my lease yet but i'm gonna go ahead and move out and in with a friend until my lease is over we briefly talked when i went to my apartment and she sort of half apologized but is still pretty hostile and defensive so i'm gonna give her space i feel bad for her but i don't think our friendship is going to survive this whole thing anyway this has been some crazy stuff and i appreciate all the responses i got you guys are awesome and what a way to start today's episode five years of using your roommate's pictures to catfish some guy it's unbelievable you facetimed him you actually facetimed him it's incredible the most baffling thing is that i just don't understand what you were ever expecting to happen here like what was the eventual play you just keep it online forever and have some weird online relationship where you never actually see the guy i just don't get it it's so creepy and after all of that maggie is angry at uop i mean she's literally used you as like i don't know like a flesh suit for five years yet she's angry at you how weird next up we have a story from r slash am i the jerk am i the jerk for telling my soon-to-be mother-in-law that my engagement ring is cursed i am a 26 year old woman and i just got engaged my soon-to-be mother-in-law is a nightmare we're currently renovating a part of our place and she's been lent a key in the meantime because she keeps coming over uninvited under the guise of helping clean up but really she just likes to snoop and interfere i do a martial arts and take my engagement ring off before class i came home from an afternoon class one day and my engagement ring was not in the jewelry dish that i usually leave it in i asked her about it and she told me that she'd taken it to a jeweler to get it cleaned she looked super smug about it and when i asked which jeweler she pretended she couldn't remember i didn't want to give her the satisfaction of having a reaction to it so i just let it slide for a couple of days yeah that is very weird off the bat 
A couple of days pass and I ask her about it again and she's super vague, still pretending she can't remember which jeweler and saying she's too busy to go and pick it up anytime soon. So I said, wow, I really feel for that jeweler. I hope nothing happens to her. She asked what I meant and I told her that my superstitious Brazilian grandmother had performed some traditional ritual on it that's usually known to curse anyone who takes or handles the ring other than the owner. She looked uneasy and asked me a couple more questions about this ritual and I made some story up about how my mother's ring had been taken by a burglar who was crushed by a pillar of cement on his way out of the house. I totally made up this entire ritual and I do have a Brazilian grandmother but obviously she didn't do some ritual to my ring. The next day, my fiance told me while I was out that she was there to clean up a bit. Lo and behold, I get home, she'd already left, and I find my ring where I'd left it. It didn't look any cleaner than it had before. A week later, I received an abusive call from her saying she'd been in a minor car accident and she was blaming me and my witch doctor grandmother saying she was now cursed for having touched it. I passed the phone to my fiance who tried to calm her down, but she was hysterical. I told my fiance what I told her and he scolded me a bit because we both know how she is and I should have known she'd react this sort of way. It's been a further week since then and she refuses to talk to me and keeps slandering me to my fiance. Overall, he sort of recognizes how ridiculous she's being, but the drama of the situation is making me wonder if the whole curse tale was taking it a bit too far. So, am I the jerk? No, absolutely not. And I really hope that your fiance in this update is going to do something about his mother. Let's see what happens. Update. I really did not expect this sort of response to this post. Thank you all so much for the awards. My fiance and I have had a big chat and he's admitted that he has to step up when it comes to his mother. Good. He retrieved her key an hour ago and he told her not to worry about the curse because it would have no effect on anyone who touched it without malicious intent. Big thank you to the commenters who suggested that absolutely gold approach. Okay, first of all, good on your fiance. Second of all, that is a genius idea from a Reddit commenter. If you think about it, if OP had just said, yeah, it was all kind of a ruse to get you to give me my ring back as I knew you had it the whole time and you knew where it was, etc., etc., then that relationship would have gone completely downhill. And who knows, she may well have stolen even more stuff from you in the future that you just don't want to have stolen by your mother-in-law. But by keeping that curse ritual thing alive as a meme, if anything, thing uh, even though obviously it's not real that is going to make sure that she doesn't do anything like this in the future and she still believes it so you got your ring back she's not going to do anything like that in the coming future all good a very harmless white lie that has served you very well and will continue to do so i hope my married next door neighbor is cheating on her husband with at least two different guys during the day while he's at work what would you do me and my boyfriend moved into our place almost three years ago and sometime last year a new couple in their mid-30s moved in directly next door terrace two level houses so we share a wall we both have two upstairs bedrooms and it quickly became apparent that they chose the room that shares a wall with our bedroom as we would often hear them having sex at night no prawn style level moaning or anything like that but you can easily make out the movement of the bed and slapping of flesh on flesh so enough to be a distraction we both found it funny at first but often they'd be at it in the very early hours of the morning, especially at weekends, and often multiple times back to back with breaks between. It really started to interrupt our sleeping, so we decided just to move rooms, and now our old bedroom is my work from home office. While they were both working from home and I was in my new office room, I'd still hear them at it during the day every now and then. But I'd just put on my headphones and try and ignore it. No big deal and good on them for having such an active sex life. Once the husband went back to office working, I was no longer having to reach for my headphones nearly as often, so I thought that would be the end of it a few weeks after him going back to work however the midday sex noises started up again even more enthusiastic and frequent than before which was odd as her husband's car was not parked outside i also noticed a pattern of hearing their doorbell go shortly before the sex started and after going full nosy neighbor mode and peeking through our blinds almost every day i noticed that a guy was parking his van just up the road popping in next door for an hour of fun then heading back out not only that but i've even spotted a different guy turning up every now and then i've been cheated on before albeit in a much more casual relationship when i was younger and i think it's one of the most disrespectful and hurtful things that someone can do to another person it makes me so sad for her husband and hearing her go at it with these guys on an almost daily basis is getting me increasingly annoyed and angry my boyfriend says i just need to ignore it and it's not worth getting caught up in these things now i kind of agree but i do almost feel like making some kind of anonymous tip off to let her husband know somehow so what do you guys think p.s she was already halfway through her second round with one of the guys this afternoon when i started typing this 
Oh god, just to compound matters. Now, before we get into the update, first of all, get your comments in down below if you are on YouTube. I want to know what you think, and here are my thoughts. I completely agree with everything that OP said, and yes, technically it is none of your business. It's not your relationship, but if you were the husband, would you want to know? Obviously you would, therefore you got to tell him. Do it anonymously, do it in person, I don't care. You just have to let the bloke know because it's so unfair on him for all this to be going on behind his back and him not to know. Like, whose side are you on here? Do you want to tell the husband and at least he knows? Otherwise, he's just going to be getting cheated on behind his back forever. Or do you want to not say and therefore protect his wife who is doing this behind his back every single day? Nah, you gotta let him know. So first of all, OP has replied to some of the comments suggesting things to do. Thanks for the wide range of replies, everyone. For those saying, mind my own business, I get that to an extent, but it kind of becomes my business when it's distracting me from work on a daily basis. Yeah, good point. There's been a few times I've had calls while it's been going on, and I just have to pray that the noise cancelling from my mic is doing its job and be extra quick on the mute button when I'm not talking. A lot are saying to separate the two issues, which seems like good advice. After all, it's the noise that's impacting me personally. Even if it were her and her husband, that would still be a major annoyance for me. In fact, even though we've moved rooms, we can still hear them most nights and often early morning too. I honestly don't know how she can manage so much. Admittedly, the cheating aspects, assuming it's not some kind of open relationship thing they have going on, which seems unlikely, but yes, I suppose it is possible, is adding to my emotional response for sure. But ultimately, that is between them, not me. And yeah, I do agree with that, guys, but I don't know, me in that situation, I'd literally have to say. As much as I empathize with the husband, again, assuming he's unaware, I do agree with a lot of the comments here that it's not my place to out her, and it's not worth being in any way involved with the potential fallout. My boyfriend also shares this view. Yeah, maybe, but it's also quite cowardly, in my opinion. Reporting it to the council or the police just doesn't seem like an option. I mean, it is, but it would be obvious it was us who complained, and neither of us want to go down that path. No, I agree with that. I think I will have to try to pluck up the courage and maybe try to bring it up casually the next time i see her on her own and hope for the best on the bright side their neighbor on the other side is an older guy who is practically deaf so if they at least swap rooms like we did there's less chance of the other neighbor hearing them at it so here is the update that you've all actually been waiting for well turns out there was a twist after all after all my moaning my boyfriend got talking to the guy at the back over the weekend and as sensitively and politely as possible, brought up the subject of the noise. And well, long story short, they are adult content creators. Obviously, he never mentioned anything about the guy showing up, but we think it's probably safe to assume he's well aware. The husband was also very apologetic and admitted they were both worried about noise, but figured it must not be that bad as we've never mentioned anything all this time and that they tend not to hear much from us. It turns out the wife is now doing this as her main job and quit her previous job months ago, and they already plan on turning their spare room into her studio, which, if it happens, should mean much less noise for us. Kudos to all all of you that called me out for being so presumptuous that she was cheating lesson learned not to jump to conclusions wow there we go i mean look if you're in the comments right now and you'd already commented that you thought they worked in the industry or were you know adult content creators then fair play i hold my hands up i for one did not see that coming i've got to be honest though i disagree with the last point there's nothing wrong with being presumptuous about someone cheating again think about it what's the worst that could happen if you were to say that oh he's not cheating we're adult content creators i get why you might have thought that Okay, no worries. All good. That's the end of the conversation. Or he is actually being cheated on. Oh, I didn't realize that I've been cheating on behind my back for five years. I might have to divorce my wife now. Uh, again, thank you for telling me. Like, in my opinion, there are no bad repercussions here for saying, by the way, very noisy over there. Just to let you know. Don't know if you know what's going on. Simple as that. You know what's crazy? If we go back to the beginning, the first original post, OP says, no prawn star level moaning or anything like that. Wow. Uh, if only you knew. If only you knew. I, a 26-year-old man, found her, a 28-year-old woman's TikTok after we went on a date. This is honestly not something I expected to post about. But here's the thing. I've known this woman for a while since we are in the same friend groups. She's a nice person, attractive, and honestly, I've always enjoyed my talks with her. A few weeks ago, I asked her out on a date. I figured if she says no, it's fine but she actually agreed. We went on a date this past Saturday, and honestly, I thought it was awesome. We went out to dinner, had drinks, spent the rest of the night talking, and we even took a walk on a walking bridge over the town's lake. It's not a big one. I dropped her off and was elated. I absolutely loved the night. However, that night when I was scrolling through TikTok on my bed, 
A post from her, I didn't follow nor knew she had a TikTok at that point, appeared on my For You page. Essentially, she said in the video, getting ready for a date I really don't want to go on. That was like a bucket of ice water being thrown on my head. I was so freaking happy and I just found out she didn't even want to go on a date with me. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying she has to want it, but please let me know if that's the case. We don't need to go out. We can forget I even asked her out. But doing this on the internet, it made me self-conscious. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Now I'm unsure about what to do. Should I tell her I saw this or just forget about it? Honestly, it really hurt me and I'm not really sure I want to give this another try. I mean, she didn't want to go out with me in the first place, right? Wow, that is a really, really tough situation. But without further ado, let's get into the update. This was posted just a week later. Hello, everyone. Some people have reached out to me through comments or chats asking for an update on the situation. Sadly, there isn't much to share at the moment, but I'll provide what I can. Please keep in mind that I won't be discussing this further, nor will I reply to comments. Thank you for your understanding. After last week's post, I read almost every comment, or at least most of them. I'm thankful to all those who commented and shared a bit of their own personal story. Some people mentioned that anxiety is normal and feeling like not going out is definitely common, suggesting that I shouldn't look too much into it. While I agree with their perspective and see no fault in not feeling like going out, what bothered me the most in this situation was having to post a TikTok for a significant audience. I am a private person by nature and even my social media accounts like Instagram only have one single post. I don't really like to overtly share nor do I want to be with somebody who does. It's completely fine to share whatever you want. I just don't want to be a part of it. So I decided not to contact her. I chose to pretend I'd never seen the post and let things be. I understand a lot of people might think this isn't the best choice, but I feel it's the best course for both of us. Last Thursday, a few friends who also happen to know her invited me for drinks. We went to a bar and while we were eating and enjoying our drinks, a mutual friend asked me how my date went as our circle was aware that we were going on a date. I didn't want to say much, so I just replied, oh, it was good, but I don't think we clicked. This friend followed it by saying, we figured which made me feel rather uneasy. When I asked what he was talking about, he hesitated, but eventually said that they had seen a TikTok post from her about not wanting to go out. At this point, I didn't really know what to say. This situation is just incredibly messy for me, but there's not much I can do about it. Still, I wasn't going to mention it, nor did I try to look up if there was any update on her part. In fact, I deleted TikTok after that incident. It just wasn't doing me any good. Nevertheless, this past Saturday, she sent me a text. She mentioned that she enjoyed our date and asked if I wanted to go out again. I understand that she clearly stated that she enjoyed our time together. However, I don't want to be with someone who exposes so much of their personal life. It's not something that would be good for me. So I decided to tell her the truth and I sent a text explaining that while I absolutely enjoyed our date, her company, and that I thought she was an amazing woman, her post from the night of our date came across my For You page on TikTok and it made me feel really self-conscious. While I understand that she enjoyed the date, contrary to what she felt at the time of the post, I didn't feel comfortable going out with someone who had such a high level of exposure online. I wished her the best and expressed hope that she finds someone whose lifestyle aligns with hers. She has read the message and left me on read ever since. I don't think she'll reply and I don't think we'll have a lot of social interactions going forward. I'm sorry if this wasn't the update you guys were expecting, but yeah, sadly, that's what the situation became. Anyhow, I wish everyone a good day. Okay, wow, what a post to start things off. First of all, I've got to say that usually I try and keep my comments relatively short and concise on these episodes, but I have so much personal stuff to say about this that I don't think this is going to be short. First of all, I literally know someone who's been in this exact position before. It's actually one of my good friend's brothers. And yeah, he was in this exact spot dating someone who posted about their dates and well, her dates with him on TikTok. 
it's a very, very weird spot. I mean, this person has quite a few thousand followers. We're talking tens of thousands here. This is a relatively big account. And yeah, he knew that after going on a date with her or texting her or, you know, just his feelings towards her or her feelings towards him, it was going to be public through her TikTok account. And that was obviously pretty weird. It was also weird for us, right? Watching these videos from her. She's American and he lives in America. But yet we were given an insight into their dating life. It was just a bit strange given that we knew the person that she was talking about. Now, if you don't know who that person is, maybe it's interesting. I can hold my hands up here. However, linking this back to the story I've just read, from OP's perspective, I don't think it's a very comfortable position to be in when you going on a pretty intimate day, you know, a personal thing, yet the person you're doing that with is spreading everything or telling everyone online about it. Now look, I know that there is a big audience for that. I completely understand it. And it's very popular, that sort of content. But I agree with OP. It's not the best thing, I think, to have somebody just spreading that information online. I don't know. I, I kind of agree. For me personally, I don't give out too much information about myself online, if I'm being pretty honest. I actually don't give out that much at all. Yeah, you know, I have an Instagram account. I have a Twitter, but those aren't that public really i mean they are public but they're not super public i'm not like posting stories every day about what i'm doing i'm not kind of necessarily telling you a lot all the time how i'm feeling or like my dating life or that sort of stuff it's just just not what i kind of want to do because i feel like it's important to keep that sort of stuff separate i don't know <laughs> people do that sort of stuff and and people love it it's just probably not for me now going back to op here i think that the way he's handled this is really really mature and it's actually a great reason for for not continuing to see this person and i'd like to think that if i felt the same way which i might i might i feel i feel like i'm more inclined not to because i, I get this sort of industry but you never know i don't i wouldn't want someone saying oh this date was good oh my boyfriend's really annoying me doing a video about all that stuff to be honest so i might but yeah by saying look we had a great day i appreciate the fact that you know maybe you had reservations before or not or i like the fact that you said you wanted to go on another date all good. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody or see somebody that is posting so much stuff publicly about just me and you. I think that's a very, very valid point. But if you think about it, right, his friends saying to him, yeah, we figured. They've seen the video. I mean, that kind of epitomizes the whole notion of, of what OP is saying, right? You don't want other people. You don't want your friends knowing about that sort of stuff. You don't want other people knowing. You don't want strangers knowing. It's just weird, isn't it? It's just so strange. And yeah, I think you made the right decision. Now for our next best of post. Would I be the jerk for not telling my husband I'm pregnant until after he's back from his trip? My husband is a stay at home dad to our four year old daughter. He is an extremely devoted and loving dad who has barely spent any time away from her. And she is a major daddy's girl. In two weeks, he's going to his best friend from college for a whole week. He's going to be reuniting with his college friends that he hasn't seen or spent time with altogether since our own wedding. He originally wanted the three of us to go, but I convinced him to just go himself because I think being alone would make him enjoy it more so he doesn't have to do childcare. I think our daughter is too young for that big of a trip for people she's only met once. Also, I'm planning on taking a week off work and would love to spend one-on-one -on -one time with her that we so rarely get. This morning, I learned that I am pregnant. We've been trying for some time now and really want lots of kids, so I'm over the moon and I know that my husband and daughter will be too. I've not told my husband yet. My first pregnancy, he was a huge prepper and when I first learned I was pregnant, he went into overdrive with preparing, researching and taking care of me. He was incredibly helpful and loving and it was so sweet, but he also really worked himself up and got stressed. I don't think it'll be as bad with this one, but I could still see it being a lot. I honestly don't really want to tell him until after his trip, in three weeks, even though it's a huge secret for me to keep. I think he'll potentially be upset, which with him is very, very tame, when he finds out that I'd known for three weeks, but he would get over it fast. My concern with telling him is I could honestly see it ruining his trip. I can just imagine the constant text asking me questions for the millionth times or sharing his most recent thoughts. I really, really want him to have a chill and fun trip and be able to decompress. And for myself, I want to be able to just focus on having a great time with my girl. 
but I also don't want to just hide something so hugely important to our family from him since he obviously deserves to know. I can't really decide. Would I be the jerk if I decided to wait to tell him until after his trip? Okay, so before we get into the update here, first of all, a couple of relevant comments from the original comments section. Someone has said, no, you're not the jerk, but definitely don't tell anyone else before him. I completely agree with that. The logic here does make sense from OP. I think that's completely fine. But yeah, you cannot tell anyone else because that is when it would get unfair. OP replies, oh yeah, I'm definitely not telling anyone else. That's why I'm asking Reddit for advice on this and not friends or family. Yeah, that does make sense. Although I may tell my daughter right before he gets home because I'm loving all of the surprise suggestions that I'm seeing, especially with her wearing a big sister shirt. That is a good shout. Someone else has replied to that saying, I love the big sister shirt. If she's not reading yet, you can have her help you make it, then tell her when she's putting it on to show him that it has a secret message for daddy to read out loud to her. They can both get a surprise at the same time. That is genius. Oh my word. She can blurt out when she sees him that her shirt has a secret message for him and she won't know ahead of time what it is oh, that is so clever and op has replied that she absolutely loves this this is absolutely what she's gonna do thank you so much what a great idea that is okay so now for the update which came six days later so i hadn't planned to give an update so soon but even though i planned on waiting until after my husband's trip after a few days it became clear to me that i could not wait that long he definitely knew something was up with me I've been getting crazy excited and been chomping at the bit to tell him. And honestly, it just didn't feel good to keep something that big from him for so long. We've been trying for this baby for close to a year now, and it's such happy news. And I decided it's just not worth it. But I still wanted to give him the surprise I had planned. I asked him to go out to the store to grab something really quick. And before he got home, I had my daughter put a shirt I'd got on her that had only child crossed out with big sister written underneath. When he came through the front door, she sprinted to him, yelling about how her shirt had a secret message for him. He was very taken aback and it took him a second, but once it clicked, he was beyond excited, as was our very confused daughter once we told her. She started dancing around the house, singing about having a baby sister, which she is adamant it will be, and it was just a really good day. He's still going on a trip and has not been even close to as stressed as he was last time. If anything, he's looking forward to it even more now because he knows it's going to be a last chance to really decompress before things become a whole lot crazier. Thank you so much everyone for all of the lovely comments and responses that I got. I really appreciated them. I showed my husband the post and admitted my original plans and he got a big kick out of it, but he's very glad that I told him before the trip. Thanks again. Well, there we go. If you were after some wholesome content today, that's it. You just got it. That was just a beautiful story. I just love that. Sometimes Reddit can be a pretty toxic and negative place, but it's good to remind ourselves that, that a lot of good stuff does also exist on the website like that. That was wonderful. I mean, honestly, like the amount of stuff, you guys know this, the amount of stuff I read about entitled parents, like entitled kids, just, just rude people and terrible people in general. Then you come across a family like this, where, you know, even on a subreddit like, am I the jerk? Sometimes a lot of the posts are kind of negative or you're like, yeah, this is kind of not great anyway. I mean, some people are in the wrong here. Some people are not entirely sure. This is just someone genuinely asking, should I should I tell him now or later? Because either way, it's going to be an amazing thing. But could I potentially make something that's going to be amazing as well, his trip away, a little bit worse? Just great. Just like a healthy relationship, a lovely family, very enjoyable stuff. Um, I agree with you as well, OP. I think that, it, you know, it wouldn't be as stressful this time. I'll try and put myself in that situation. Obviously, it's tough because I'm not a father. However... One day I may well be, and I think if I am to become a father twice, the second time would be a lot less stressful. I can imagine myself being a little bit like OP the first time, just wanting to make sure everything's okay, being you know on top of stuff, asking loads of questions, trying to sort things out. But I feel like once you've done it once, the second time is a lot easier and you know more what you're doing. So uh, yeah, I reckon he's going to enjoy the holiday 
a lot. I just caught my girlfriend in bed with my dad. So to start, I am a 22 year old man and I've been with my soon to be ex-girlfriend Kate, who is 21 for just shy of three years. Our relationship throughout the three years has been amazing. She'd always been kind and supportive and very open and honest with me. We had dates often. Our love making life was great. We had very few arguments, but when we did get into a disagreement, we managed to communicate and come to an understanding before long. I believed our relationship to be healthy and loving, but apparently I was wrong. On to the story. About a week ago, I had started to notice that Kate was becoming very touchy about me being on or around her phone. Now this was odd to me because not only had she always let me use her phone to make calls if mine was flat or if I didn't have immediate access to mine, but she'd also downloaded games for me to play on her phone so that she could distract me when she wanted to watch her shows. Kate began snapping at me for asking to borrow her phone or snatching it out of my hand if I was so much as moving it away from the edge of the counter so it wouldn't fall. And whenever I questioned her behavior, she brushed it off and explained she was just in a bad mood. Her constant dismissal of my noticeable confusion began to annoy me. So I asked if she was hiding anything from me, which led to an argument about her saying I was accusing her of infidelity and not trusting her. And then she began to try and get physical with me, in which case I shut the argument down and told her to sleep in the guest bedroom. She was very angry about it, but I told her we would talk about it in the morning. When we did talk about it, she apologized for her behavior and gave me her phone. I told her I trusted her and I didn't need to go through her. And to be frank, I did trust her. And I believed her outburst to be due to the ongoing stress at work, which was clearly stupid of me. The next day I noticed she got on a missed call from my father. I'd never known my father to like Kate or even have her contact at that. In fact, I was convinced they both disliked each other. At any and every family event, they'd often argue or make snarky remarks at one another until we'd have to leave due to the tense atmosphere they'd created. So I decided to ask Kate why my father had called her. She physically froze and mumbled an excuse about it being my birthday soon and he'd planned something, but my father and I were never very close, so I didn't understand why he would. But I played it off and decided to go about my day. Then the following night, I texted her explaining that I had a late shift and I'd be back at around 10 p.m. latest. But we ended up being dismissed early due to an incident regarding our manager and a few staff, and so I was heading home by 7 p.m. I tried calling her, but she had her phone off, so I assumed it had gone flat or she'd turned it off, which she does often at home. When I made it home, I noticed my father's car two houses down from ours, and so I tried calling him, but his phone was also turned off, which I found odd. My mother likes his phone to be on so she can call him when she needs him. She's handicapped. I assume my mother was with him, so I opened the door quietly to surprise her, as I haven't seen her in a while, and I was met with the sight of my girlfriend bent over the kitchen counter with my father behind her. They both froze and started profusely yelling and telling me it wasn't what it looked like and that they could explain. But I shut and locked the door from the outside, deadbolt, and made my way to a friend's house. Since then, they've both been blowing up my phone, apologizing and begging me not to say anything to anyone. And quite frankly, I'm just disgusted. Disgusted in my father, who is turning 60 next month and has my mother to take care of. And disgusted in Kate, who was getting railed by my father for who knows how long. I honestly just want to throw up and set them both on fire. But I'm most worried about how my mother will take the situation, as she's very dependent on my father and adores him. How should I go about this? I don't need closure or to confront them. I don't want to know how their gross relationship started or how long it's been going on for. I just need advice on how to approach the situation without causing a bigger mess than there is. Any advice is welcome. Well, OP, I'm not even going to bother trying to sugarcoat this one. This is just horrific. And I'm not even entirely sure that there's anything you can do. Uh, Ultimately, you've just walked in on one of the most distressing things I can possibly imagine. And my immediate reaction is just to say, that is awful. Cut them both off. Now, the good news, guys, is that we do actually have an update to this story posted by OP two weeks later. Without further ado, let's see what happened next and let's see what OP decided to do. So then, as per someone's advice, I asked my mother to lunch and after some small talk, informed her of the situation. She was understandably upset and in denial about the situation as my father had spoken to her prior about me still holding a grudge, a story for another time, and that I would be likely to come up with a lie to turn her against him for revenge. But after showing her the messages that they'd sent afterwards, she was distraught and visibly angry about the ordeal. And I've just realized that I completely forgot to even think about the mum in my commentary there. Oh, wow. I then asked her if she would be comfortable with me sending an email to our relevant family members and Kate's parents and siblings. And while she was a little reluctant about it, she said that she didn't want the backlash from his family for leaving him. So I then did just that. 
I sent an email explaining the situation and that my mother and I would be going no contact with both Kate and my father and low contact with anyone who gave either of us any grief for our decision. Now, mum is staying with her older sister while I'm with a close mate until we can figure out a stable living situation for us both. So that is the mum update, the person that I completely forgot to even mention. Now onto the actual updates. After that email was sent, there was radio silence for a day or two before both my mother and I were bombarded with a mix of messages that are just summarized in small paragraphs. Kate's parents were evidently enraged that I accused their daughter of such a thing and that they would be suing me for defamation on their daughter's behalf i then took the liberty of sending them the screenshots from both kate's and my father's messages and they left me on scene for a couple of days before replying to me and informing me that while they wouldn't sue me they would appreciate if i kept the situation under wraps wow that is tough to take from their perspective my father was the first to message my mother attempted to convince her that i staged the messages and that i was being petty and lying and when she wouldn't believe him he accused her of cheating on him and trying to find a way out of their marriage which evidently isn't possible for my mother as she has trouble getting from place to place on her own. He then apologized and told her he was just frustrated and asked to see her. And when she declined again, accused her of cheating and staying with her lover while abandoning him. This man is unbelievable. My maternal grandparents and paternal grandparents had very different messages and not in the way I thought they would. My paternal grandparents apologized for their son's behavior and told my mother that if she needed support in the future, they were available and informed her that they would be disowning and going no contact with my father my maternal grandparents however despite being the people that raised my mum, told her that due to her injury and not being able to fulfill her husband's needs it was only right of him to look elsewhere for fulfillment and while they understood that it was wrong because it was my partner kate was available for him and my mother should forgive him and move on they also made a point to state that my mother needs my father more than he needs her kate's two older sisters reached out and thanked me for telling them and informed us that if we my mother and i need any assistance in the future in regards to my mother's health as one is an elderly caretaker and the other is a physiotherapist that they were willing to help my mother and i gave ourselves a few days to get through all the messages and phone calls and block my maternal grandparents as well as my father my mother didn't already have him blocked i contacted my landlord and real estate agent and informed them briefly of the situation that i was no longer living on the premises and that i would like to have my name taken off the lease luckily our lease was being renewed in that coming week and the next day they contacted kate to inform her that i had taken my name off the lease for the following month and in the next week if she was unable to take on my portion of rent she'd have three months to vacate the property i don't know how she reacted but i could tell it wasn't overly ecstatic as her parents contacted me and asked if despite everything i would be willing to pay for her rent just for this month because she doesn't have the money for it at the moment obviously i declined and told them i no longer have anything to do with her anymore they then informed me that she was pregnant with my child and needed assistance from the father of her baby and that this would be a last goodbye i then laughed and told them i most definitely wasn't the father of that baby if she was pregnant and if she needed the assistance from her baby daddy to contact my father then i hung up and blocked them what have i just read on a brighter note my mother and i have just put a down payment on a house together and are looking into hiring a caregiver to help my mother for when i have work or trips out of states my father has attempted to call both of us from multiple phone numbers and had numerous family members try to persuade my mother into meeting up with him to chat and as a result my mother and i have gotten a new phone number to avoid this mess i also happen to hear from a mate that kate is trying to hire a lawyer so that she can get child support money from me But apparently, because she has no proof that I'm a father and refuses to take a DNA test of the baby, she hasn't had any luck. Well, that is where that story ends. What the, what, what the f*** I just read? What the f*** I just read, guys? Uh, Sorry for swearing, but you know, I don't really know what just happened. What, what is that? Sometimes you just gotta laugh at these sort of posts because, wow, astonished beyond belief crazy so you're telling me right that op now has no idea whether he is a father or a stepbrother to a child that is his dad's and his ex-girlfriends what what is life what is life again like maybe it's a bit crude to be laughing at this or smirking as i am doing and i know i'm doing it but what else can you do in this sort of situation op if you do happen to be watching and listening then you know it's a tough spot man 
and I feel for you, I really do. But for me, as someone that's just reading this off the internet, wow, what a story. Anyway, let's move on to another one. My husband's browser history shattered my heart. I will try to make this as short as possible. It's a lot to unpack, but there is some backstory that's important. We've been married for nine years and have two little kids. Our relationship has had its ups and downs throughout the years, but nothing terrible that we couldn't pull through. Mostly pure exhaustion from hard pregnancies, disconnection and lack of sex because of said difficult pregnancies, and a super difficult infant who didn't sleep for two years. Bankruptcy, a job he hated. Yeah, it's been a little tough. But we're each other's person, you know, like I love this man to the ends of the earth So when I tell you what I saw on his browser history not only shattered my heart But I could literally feel parts of my soul dying here we go about a year ago My husband and I had a huge heart-to-heart -heart talk about reconnecting and wanted to get back to a new normal after kids So we started really making us a priority Rebuilding our relationship and sharing our most intimate feelings My husband opened up to me about his desire to give a man oral that he isn't attracted to men, but he is attracted to male genitals. Now, I have no problem with this. In fact, I felt this overwhelming sense of attraction to him in that moment. I loved how vulnerable and honest he felt like he could be with me. It was special. So we talked more and more about what that situation would look like, etc. We both agreed on our boundaries and our number one rule, no matter what, is to always do anything sexual together. So we found a safe avenue to meet like-minded couples. We had one experience and it was great, but was uncontrollably cut short. So we've opened our minds to the possibility of trying to find a male friend. In the meantime, my husband gets a new job and is starting to travel. Fast forward three months after our last and only experience, and my husband gets the news that he'll be traveling to Europe for 10 days. The weeks leading up to this trip, he was so distracted with what I thought was travel plans, bookings, ordering things he needed for his trip. I give him grace because he's never been to Europe and I know he's excited. Fast forward to the night before he leaves. We're laying in bed, cuddling, about to love on each other, and out of the blue, he asked me, if I met a man in Europe, would you be okay with me doing stuff with him? My heart sank to my stomach. My throat closed up and all I could squeak out was no. I could tell that he was disappointed in my response and he said, I don't want you to worry. I just needed to ask and now I know. I couldn't talk. I just cried myself to sleep. He woke up before me that morning and sent a long apologizing text to me to read when I woke up, telling me not to worry. I said no and that is that. I just found this whole situation so, so odd and so random. Like, what? And then he asked me the night before he leaves? So I tell him that I'm super uncomfortable and I'm worried because he's leaving for 10 days and we can't unpack this together the way we need to. He literally leaves like two hours later. Every single internal alarm is going off. Red flags are waving in the wind. And I looked. I looked at his browser history and it broke my spirit. According to his history, two days after he found out he'd be traveling, he created a sex dating profile for this particular area. Then he deleted his profile the morning after he asked me the question. Then reactivated the account the moment he got to the airport. His profile read, seeking couples or a single male to show him around, have a few drinks, and if things go well, maybe some guy-on-guy -guy playtime. Heart shattered then i see that he spent hours researching happy ending massages sex clubs bdsm clubs glory holes and escorts all female escorts he researched pricing and location proximity to his hotel room as far as i'm able to tell nothing happened with anyone from the sex site but it wasn't because of his lack of effort he was trying real hard but i have very little confidence in saying that i doubt something happened at all whether it was a strip club which he can go to but it has to be with me that's one of our rules or a sex club or a happy ending massage i've looked at our finances and if anything did happen he paid cash or has a card i don't know about so i'm just here staring at our little kids heartbroken and hiding it from the world i don't want our marriage to end but i feel like this is going to be a very painful process and i just want to be the best mum to our kids and doing that while mending a broken heart is just the hardest thing i've tried to do i don't know how to tell him that i know i also know now that he researches these things everywhere he travels and is most likely visiting a strip club twice a month when he's gone i'll never understand hurting someone you love even if you think they won't find out sigh
About two days after my initial post, I had a dream that I had a heart attack because of all this stress and I decided that enough was enough. I hugged him this morning and told him that we needed to talk about something tonight after the kids were in bed. So he had to think about it all day and I had more time to prepare my words. At around 8pm when the house was silent, I asked if he had anything that he wanted to tell me and that this was his one and only chance to come clean to me about anything he'd done that would hurt me. He confessed to going to a strip club in the town he has to travel to often, not Europe. I just looked at him and said, keep going. He kind of stumbled with words and looked confused and slightly panicked. So I said, here, let me just hand you my phone. I handed him my phone and on the screen, I would pulled up my Reddit post. I said, it's probably better for you to read it because I don't know if I can get the words out properly. He read everything and some of the comments. He immediately apologized for everything. He said he visited one strip club and one sex club while in Europe. He said he walked in, got grossed out and walked out of the sex club but stayed at the strip club for a few drinks. I just let him talk and I cried and cried, hoping I could get it all out so I would be able to utter the words, I don't believe you. Those words came out of my mouth at a volume and intensity I don't know that I've ever felt before. I don't believe you came barreling through the tears and then the anger hit. For the first time in our relationship, I don't believe you. That sentence took both of our breaths away. I could see the feeling of failure and remorse on his face. I asked why? Like, I need an effing answer as to why you felt the need or desire to do this. Even though I do believe he didn't actually physically do anything with anyone. He reassured me a hundred times. Am I dumb for believing that? Maybe, but my gut has been pretty spot on, so I'm following it on this. He told me, just like a lot of you have said in the comments, that the app, the research of escorts, was just another more real feeling version of prawn. That he absolutely could have done things with people there, but never ever had a plan to go through with anything. Because I said no to his request about hooking up with someone in Europe if he met the right person, he said instead he just looked and did things with himself to the thought of knowing he basically could buy a good time anytime he wanted with these people and that it's legal. I wanted to punch him. I didn't. As I pulled my fists, I screamed, Grow up. You're a husband, a father, a son, a brother. You have a life so many people can't even dream about. You have a wife right in front of you willing to go above and beyond for this relationship and your sexual curiosities. And what do you do? Focus all of your time and energy on strangers on the internet. Shatter my trust for you. Blasted through a boundary that was set about solo visits to strip clubs because you felt like that was the lesser of the evils and you've put so much time and effort into this research, you might as well reward yourself for not hooking up with escorts in Europe. He really didn't have much to say as I paused for a breath. Other than, you're right, I've been awful and I don't know what to say to make you believe that I wouldn't harm our family. I wouldn't harm your health by being with any of those people I researched. I hope you know I know how lucky I am and I don't know why I can't control myself. I told him that I absolutely believe that he has a prone addiction that has now turned extremely dangerous for us as a couple and family. He agreed. Without defense, he agreed to everything I said. We're going to start counseling together and singularly. There's so much more to say, but I'm tired. This has been so taxing and I'm just getting through it. I know I'm going to get so much heck for staying with him. I've made it perfectly clear that this is it. My words to him were, If you mess up, the kids and I are out. I told him that I had to sit down and imagine a completely new life with the kids. I've had to endure that heartache of imagining our lives moving on without him. I've already calloused my heart to the thoughts, which should scare the heck out of him. But also know this, I said, I will not go down silently. This is your chance to be a better man right here, right now. He's been amazing to us since then. He's owned up to his word and kept his promises so far. He's been communicating with me about so many things. He's decreased his prawn habits by probably 90%. He's dating me again and playing with the kids more. I feel like I'm seeing the person I married again, but I'm also so scared that when this honeymoon phase ends, what's next? Ugh, people, just don't hurt your person. Make life beautiful and just love them with all you've got. Now, that update was posted on r slash true off my chest literally two weeks ago to the day, which, to be honest, guys, I don't want to say this, but it makes me a little bit worried because it's literally only been five weeks since he was called out in the first place, since this entire thing started. It's three weeks between the first post and the update, and that is, as OP says, clearly the honeymoon phase. Like, ideally, you're going to be with this man for life, right? You've been with him nine years. You don't want to just see this behavior lasting for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, hey, even a couple of years, and then he slowly regresses back into what he was doing. 
There's a reason why he was doing that in the first place. I would suggest that unless you really do get some great therapy and he really wants to change his ways, there's a pretty high chance that he'll fall back into that same sort of behavior. I don't know. Maybe that's a bit harsh to say, but that is my initial inclination. I've got to be honest. If anything, you could say that maybe these days he's just better at clearing his history. He's going to become more secretive. It's a massive thing to do all the stuff that he said like if you get what i'm saying the sort of stuff that he's doing is at such a level that he's not just gonna be able to completely go oh yeah that was wrong i'm not gonna do that anymore like that was a big part of his life clearly and he had big desires to do this sort of stuff the sense is about it being legal and him being like oh this is so fun if i really wanted to i could just do this is mental like where's the trust there I don't know. Just be careful is all I'll say. My boyfriend gave away my Hamilton tickets. Am I being selfish for just wanting to break up over this? I'm writing this on a throwaway account because while I'm fairly sure that he and his family doesn't have Reddit, I would rather be safe than sorry. Backstory. My mum is genuinely one of the funniest, kindest, sweetest people I've ever met. And I'm genuinely lucky to have been her daughter. She had me fairly young, raised me by myself. And while we were pretty poor growing up, she did her dangdest to make sure that I got a good education and had everything I needed as a kid. One of the things we share is a love of the theater. She would save up and take me to all the musicals that stopped on tour in our town. And while we were always in the cheap seats, it was always something we both greatly look forward to. These memories of going to the theater with my mum are very precious to me. And it's one of the main factors as to why I work in the entertainment industry today corporate side, I have a horrendous singing voice. So then, fast forward to today. Like most theatre nerds, my mum and I are basically obsessed with Hamilton. And for those of you who aren't really familiar with it, this show is basically impossible to get tickets for at this point, unless you want to see it in January of next year. I'm lucky enough to be in a financial position with my job that I could afford tickets for a show in July for me and my mum. These are amazing seats fifth row center and through some type of divine intervention i managed to snag tickets for the night that lynn manuel miranda's the creator lead in hamilton gave her final performance i surprised my mum with these tickets back in december i bought them in october i think for christmas i'm making a whole week of it i put us up in a really nice hotel i made reservations at a bunch of restaurants that we both want to try and we're gonna do a bunch of touristy stuff in general plus try and see if we can fit in at least one other show before we leave We are both incredibly excited for this. My mum even has a little Hamilton countdown that she's doing on a mini chalkboard she uses as a planner. She sends me pics every day when she changes them. It's cute. In January, I began dating this guy that I'll refer to as Josh. We were casual and not exclusive for a while, but became serious within the last two months. He also works in the corporate side of entertainment, but at a different agency than I do. He also has a higher position than me and makes a lot more money than I do. This becomes important. We met at an industry event and we hit it off instantly. I thought I could get really serious about this guy. And up to this point, there have been no red flags that I've seen. Although to be honest, right now I'm sifting through all my memories to see if there's something I missed. He also comes from a much wealthier family than I do. Josh has a younger sister that I'll call Jennifer. She's 17. That's kind of going through a big troubled teen phase. She cuts class, smokes, and is really disrespectful to her parents. I've only met her once, but as far as I know, she's not doing anything too bad. She's just kind of a sad kid and could really benefit from some therapy. I floated this by Josh, but he said his parents are kind of disdainful of therapy in general. Josh says they can't reach out to her no matter what they do, and they've tried everything, except trying to get her to a counsellor, but whatever. Alright then, actual problem time. Sunday night, I was at my place with Josh. We were drinking wine and cuddling while watching the Tonys, the theatre awards show. My mum was texting me during the Hamilton performance and geeking out about how excited she was. I laughed and showed my mum's text to Josh because I thought it was so adorable, and he didn't say anything off, but he was acting kind of strange afterwards he asked me what date the show we were going to was i told him and then he went into the other room to take a phone call i thought nothing of it because we both have to take random phone calls like that for our jobs all the time and he's going through kind of a tough time at his he was in an unusually good mood afterwards and said he had to go home early because he had to sign some forms at the office early tomorrow before we met up to get brunch with his parents later that day Again, that's nothing too unusual and pretty common with the both of us. All right then, next day, he picks me up at work for the brunch with his parents. And again, he's in an unusually good mood. 
I ask what's up and he says vaguely that things are going well at the office and this deal he's trying to make is finally going through. I don't really press for info because we both try to avoid work topics, partially due to work stuff being fairly banal and partially because we both have to sign some pretty gnarly NDAs a lot of the time. And this is only my second ever time meeting his parents, so I'm still a bit nervous about brunch. We get to the brunch place and the first thing his mum does when she sees me is give me a huge warm hug and profoundly thanks me for my kindness. Her dad also gives me a huge handshake and thanks me for helping out with Jen. I'm kind of what the effing because I've got no clue what they're talking about. I ask what she means and she says for giving her the Hamilton tickets. I turn around to Josh and he just has this big grin on his face. Guys, that time my boyfriend was away talking on the phone for business, he was actually on the phone with Jen promising that I would give her my Hamilton tickets. I was so thrown off by this that I kind of not very tactfully, I admit, say how I had no clue about this. Josh looks fuming and his parents are equally thrown off. But instead of getting mad at Josh, his mum just says, well, you can still give them to her though, right? And they all look at me like I'm supposed to just agree with this. And I try to explain that the trip is actually for me and my mum and how important this is to my mum. All three of them start going on about how Jen is super excited about this and that this is the first time that she's not been mad or expressed happiness to them in a while. And that's how the next half hour goes, basically, until the parents leave mad and the dad calls me a selfish cow i'm so flabbergasted that i just sort of put up with it but i could barely get in a word josh and i go outside the brunch place and he starts screaming at me about my selfishness and how jen is going through a much harder time than they thought he wasn't very clear on this so i'm not quite sure what he meant and that i'm being childish because it's just a musical now i hate having arguments in public also this is one of my favorite brunch spots and i wanted to be able to come back without being embarrassed so i really wasn't engaging he eventually he called me the c word what the heck and then left in his car which is awkward as heck because it was valet parking so he was just kind of stewing by the valet stand while i was waiting for my uber later that night i texted him saying while i wasn't giving up my tickets there are still some available on that date however they cost about two and a half thousand dollars due to ticket scalpers jacking up the price believe me this is not a problem for either the parents or my boyfriend he literally bought a three thousand dollar watch for funsies last week The only response I got was that that was an exorbitant fee. I agree, but that's not the point. That he refuses to pay and he didn't understand why I couldn't just give the tickets to Jen. I also got texts from both his parents pleading with me to get the tickets. And also they forwarded an email to me that Jen sent to Josh and her parents for thanking them for the surprise. Apparently she's also obsessed with Hamilton and this is making her year. Also, we live in LA. Do they also expect me to give up my plane ticket and hotel? Like what is their game plan here? Look, I completely understand wanting to help out with Jen and I feel really bad that apparently her family is filled with weirdos But this has all been so baffling and the entitled behavior they displayed is a massive turnoff I am not giving up these tickets. Is that selfish? But I also kind of want to cut my losses here The attitude Josh displayed towards me outside of the brunch place was very unpleasant to say the least And he knows how disrespectful I find being called a c-word So i'm of half a mind to just break up with him He knew I had these tickets for a while and I don't get why he decided to do this now at all But should I contact jen and explain it all? I just saw that she made a really excited post on facebook about it I'm not friends with her, but I am friends with my boyfriend and he liked her post. I would straight up buy the ticket for her, but frankly, I can't afford those prices as I'm saving up for the New York City trip for my mum. So how do I move forward? Well, no doubt about it. My commentary here will probably be pretty short and decisive. You've just got to get rid of the bloke. It's a no brainer. Are you mad? I'm just really happy having read the title and having gone to see Hamilton myself just last year. It's a great show that you didn't give them away because for a second there, I really thought you were going to cave in and give them to your boyfriend's sister. Now, listen, I'm not saying that wouldn't have been a lovely thing to do because of course it would have been, but they are your tickets and therefore it's your decision. And also, if you were to give them to your boyfriend's sister, you'd be taking away joy from your own mother and also you, of course, too, which would make no real sense. And as for your boyfriend and his parents, yeah, it's the biggest red flag of the century. Like, get him gone. Anyway, as I said in the intro, we actually get to find out what happens next because this is Best of Redditor Updates. And are you ready for the update? Well, here it is. Pretty short and um, pretty conclusive, 
as I really hoped it would be. Yeah, I'm typing up an email dumping him right now. There we go. That's the good news. Normally, I think it's better to meet up IRL for things like this, but his behavior both during and outside brunch was scary, and I would prefer not to be alone with him right now. Maybe that's paranoid, but better safe than sorry. No, that's completely your decision. If that's how you feel, then that is how you feel. I think this is one of those situations where everything was so crazy, and they were acting like this is totally normal behavior that I thought I was the insane one. Wow. I mean, you're not wrong. You were getting gaslit into thinking it was your duty to give your tickets up to someone that you barely even know. Like, you haven't even been going out that long, and it's his sister. Mental. I don't understand why he was keeping it a secret and then just put it on you at brunch with his parents. Ugh, horrible man. Horrible family. Let's keep it at that. Okay, then, now moving on to our next post from Best of Redditor Updates. I handed him divorce papers today over his Reddit account and a bag of chips. Obviously, it goes without saying it wasn't just the bag of chips, but hot Cheetos were my breaking point. I couldn't take it anymore. I had already had the terms of separation drawn up six months ago when, during a heated argument, he said, We don't have kids. You should be thankful it's only me you clean up after. I kept hearing it in my head thankful for cleaning up behind a grown man 10 years older than me he apologized the next day in detail and told me why what he said was wrong and that he doesn't believe it but maybe it's just out of my character but i don't think the things you say in those moments are just hurtful words there's always a little bit of truth in them i completely agree and then i found his reddit account a few days ago i accidentally saw the username when he showed me a screenshot i tried but not really not to memorize it and it took me two days to get the courage to look in between the comments on nsfw subreddits were complaints about me and posts about me too one post he'd been ripped to shreds and told he was a piece of trash reading those comments made me realize i was nothing but a freaking idiot to think that love can fix things i was 20 when i met him and he was 35 I thought people were being dramatic or annoying about our age gap because my single father who raised me didn't have an issue. But then I realized he was just the same type of freaking creep. It was almost like my father pre-groomed me to accept certain behavior to make it easier for the other men in my life. Okay, look, I'm getting off topic, but I came home early today after a rough day at work, finding out that my direct reporting manager had been killed by her husband. Then I walked in the door to see my lazy, filthy one. I told him what happened to her. I started to cry, but he didn't console me. He said, we don't know what made him do that. Let's wish both of them luck and move on with our day. Wish her luck? The freaking dead lady? I tried to convince myself he just didn't pay attention. That soothed me for about an hour until I was in the middle of making dinner and he complained that it was already 6.45. I told him he shouldn't be that hungry yet. He just ate half a bag of chips and left them on the table. So instead of A, helping me finish dinner, B, apologizing and waiting silently and patiently, C, finishing the bag of chips, or D, just laughing it off, he threw the bag of chips at me. Seven years together, four married, and he's never done anything that downright rude because low self-esteem aside, that's something that won't fly with me either way. The chips landed all over the floor that I just mopped and swept. Whatever glare I gave him, it was enough to make him grab the broom in 30 seconds. It wasn't enough to make him at least check that it was all swept up and vacuum after though. So when I finished dinner and brought our plates to the dinner table, I was thinking, wow, I really spoil him. The entire time we've dated, I've always made his plates and brought them right to him. No one's ever done that for me. And I stepped on a chip. It didn't hurt or anything, but I screamed. I'm not sure why, I just couldn't take it anymore. So, I ran to the home office and came back out with the papers and pen. I put them in front of his dinner plate and walked out while he was yelling my name. I'm killing a burger and fries in my car right now and realizing I have to start all over. My life is done. My love for him is too. I hope I don't cave. I hope I don't let him convince me. I hope if I start to change my mind, I come back and read this post so that I understand this is not a heated decision. This is something I need to do if I ever want anything like a real freaking life. Okay then, so that is the initial post. But before we get into the update, there are some very interesting comments which I just want to read as you can see on screen. So somebody said, not to mention if he knows he can treat you however he wants, what is to stop him from doing exactly what your boss's husband did to her? A horrible question, but a fair one. OP replies, This is all I could really think about. If dinner is late one day, will he hurt me? He's never actually hit me, but sometimes he makes that weird jump motion and balls up his fist during arguments. I just couldn't believe he had zero empathy for a woman who was hurt by someone she trusted and shared her life with. I saw her on Monday and never would have thought this could happen. I feel like I'm glossing over the fact that your boss 
was killed by her husband and your husband just says yeah but he might have been thinking some weird things at the time like there might be a motive for it what i mean if it isn't completely obvious already it's clear that you need to get rid of this man and you do need to divorce him and i hope as we get into the update that you do do that and then here we have a reply from op to a heartfelt comment from a woman who went through a similar experience and op says i'm genuinely so happy to hear that things got better for you it feels almost like hopefully future me right to current me especially regarding bodies i didn't include it but the reason the burger and fries were so rewarding is that he always persuaded me not to eat because i'd get fat and he wouldn't love me anymore this guy uh controlling as well as all the other stuff are you joking all right anyway let's carry on so even if i asked for a burger he would order a grilled chicken sandwich or something so literally manipulating you and controlling what you eat wow Thank you sincerely for your words. Seeing these and other comments from women who went through the same is helping me so much right now. Okay, there we go. Those are some comments. Now, I'm really hoping that the update is what we all want and she's gonna get rid of this man, please. All right, so this was posted just the next day. Okay, yeah, I wasn't expecting this sort of reaction. I didn't even log back on Reddit and see all of the replies. I was actually scrolling on TikTok and saw my own post on my FYP, which is really weird. The algorithm is algorithming, I guess. A bit scary. I really do appreciate though the support and kind messages. I don't appreciate the weird men using this as a time to hit on me and send me selfies when I'm obviously in a weak moment. Guess I'm a loser magnet or something. Guys, sorry, what? Who is doing that? And also, um, yeah, really sorry, OP, for sending you that selfie. I just thought you might like me, you know? Okay, look, I probably shouldn't be making jokes. But anyway, look, crazy part is this courage started growing when I saw someone's wife strike on TikTok soon after downloading the app during lockdown. Then I read the comments and found some sort of solidarity and finally realized that I wasn't the problem. I really was just posting it so I could leave for good this time. I'm sorry that my post isn't very concise or thorough, but this isn't the first time that I've left him. It is the fourth, but it's the one for good. I'm done. I've been saving money since I left the first time two years ago. I'm not chat with him anymore. When I left the second time, I knew that being a housewife would never give me leverage in our relationship. So I got a job. Back then, it was just to even the playing field and show him I can earn my keep. Now it's literally my saving grace. Half our relationship was built on lies. He told me he was eight years older at first, then 10, then the truth of it being 15 came out that I've always tried to get over. Because people deserve forgiveness, according to my dad, the only person I ever went to besides Reddit about advice. I just want to know what peace is like in my own home. I went straight from living with my dad to living with my boyfriend, current husband. I can comfortably take blame for how my marriage is, how my life is. My dad may have conditioned and started a lot of it, but I'm old enough to have put my foot down a long time ago. My husband and my father being the only two men I've ever had any type of relationship at 27 is my own fault. Sure, I was taught growing up that when men are around, don't make eye contact and keep my head down. And I did it, always, because good girls listen is what I was taught and all I ever knew. How did the wave of feminism keep missing me? How did I allow my father to push away every close female relationship I had? How did I allow both of them to alienate me from the world? OP, you're being controlled. It's not your fault. You've had this your entire life. I'm sorry, I have to say this. This is not your fault. Don't feel guilty. Two years ago, a woman, my age, I think, asked for a tampon in the bathroom and I gave her one. And we had a five minute conversation of girl talk that I gushed over. I'm not sure that is a good verb to be using, but nonetheless. I played it over and over for months until I realized it was absolutely insane. All she did was ask me what my favorite coffee order was and said I was pretty and she loved my handmade earrings. I had an extra pair in my car and I gave them to her and she hugged me. That was it. But I held on to those five minutes because it was the last time I had an interaction with a human being that didn't leave me feeling empty. Oh wow, how sad. I should have left for good when he told me that getting a master's degree is for men. I should have left when I picked up woodworking and simple robotics as hobbies and he told me that I might be transgender and that he can't be attracted to a woman that wants to be a man. I'm not trans or transphobic. I just like the smell of freshly sawed wood and making new things. I should have left when I got accepted into the best university in the state and he told me that women would be happier if they stopped trying to compete with men. I should have left when my dad died and my husband told me I wasn't upset enough about the man who would choke me over burning food and dinner not being good at 11 years old. Our relationship got considerably worse after the wedding when I told him everything my dad had done. I should have left when I got groped at a concert and he bought the guy a drink later. 
I should have left when his friend said things about my body and he just joined in and later told me I shouldn't complain and enjoy the attention while it lasts. I should have left when I told him I wasn't sure if I wanted kids and he told me I wasn't a real woman if I didn't want them. I should have left when he admitted to having his fellow officers follow me and show up to my job to make sure I was actually where I said I was. I should have left when he gave me the silent treatment for a month when I told him it was controlling and would only communicate via sticky notes. I should have left when I caught him sending nudes to a 19 year old. I definitely should have left when the same girl replied to his nude photos, telling him how much of a loser he was and saying she felt bad for his wife. Besides being predatory, that one was quite frankly just embarrassing. I guess the reason I stayed so long is that he makes it seem like he's trying. After I caught him sexting, he immediately signed up for sex addiction therapy. When he said things that were hateful towards women, I would then see videos in his YouTube watch history about unlearning sexism watched all the way through i would think hey at least that's way more than my dad ever did hey at least he doesn't hit me hey at least he brings me flowers and takes me on dates often men are just like that i was told men have to be respected i was told your husband deserves full trust i thought to this day i'm not sure if he did these to please me temporarily or because he meant it and at least half tried i made the mistake of not leaving at least a hundred times i will never make that mistake again he texted and called non-stop after i left i went back to our home his house to get necessities with headphones on and he came out of nowhere and snatched them off my head and destroyed them airpod maxes that i just bought I just kept packing and ignored everything he said until I realized that my passport was gone. He won't admit it, but he 100% has it. I know it. He wouldn't sign the papers. We argued a bit and I finally just said it. I don't love you anymore. I can't love someone like you. I'm a grown woman now and I don't want to be with you anymore. He countered with, you can't survive without me. I'm the only man who's ever loved you. You don't have anything without me. I'm the breadwinner. This is my house. You have no money, no family, no friends. He's only right about the last two. I told him that we don't have a prenup and if we divorce with him fighting me on it, I'll get half of everything. But if he signs the papers I gave him, it agrees to leave him the house and all the furniture, three of four cars and 80% of the money in our savings and investments. I can walk away and start over. I want to walk away and start over. He, on the other hand, probably needs a retirement plan that isn't young women. It's more than he deserves, but I don't want to look at anything I have and be reminded of him. When he realized the yelling and threats wouldn't work, he then tried tears. And I almost caved. Then I remembered he was freaking 42 years old on his knees crying about a 27 year old that just wanted to be treated with love, dignity and respect. I gave him close to a decade of my life of nothing but loyalty and love. When he lashed out in anger, I responded with love. I'm all out of love. I picked a random Airbnb over state lines so he has little pull here and my job is allowing me to work remotely for now. I can already see a life that's actually worth living coming to me. I have a lot of legal stuff to figure out that will be a headache, but it's still a smaller headache than loving him was. I don't think I'll go back. I only use his account for woodworking and photos of cows. So yeah, sorry if I'm not super responsive. It was a lot of replies and I'm trying to go through them. Really though, thank you for the kind words. I've cried and felt more supported today than I have my entire life. And there we go. That is the end of that. The update that we were all hoping for, I guess. But still, the only thing I can really think of is just that is so sad. Like Her entire youth, 27 years of her life, a quarter of a century over, has been pretty much destroyed or at least very much controlled, warped and manipulated by two disgusting men. How tragic is that? You know, guys, if there's one thing that I think we should all take from this story, it's this comment that I've just seen right now, which, to be honest, is excellent. It's up on screen right now if you're watching on YouTube. It says, please take a moment to ponder this. All she did was ask me what my favorite coffee order was and said I was pretty. That is a sentence that we saw earlier on in the story. That one interaction with that one woman, those five minutes that Opie then thought about for years, it seems. No interaction is too small, even if seemingly insignificant. And every time we show a modicum of kindness and human warmth to really see someone else for a moment, it can make all the difference as it did in the story. What a moral that is. My 37 year old man, wife's 34 year old woman, sister, 29 year old woman, try to kiss me and now my wife is spiraling help me as the title says my wife's sister made a pass at me at a recent family gathering and i have no idea what to do for context i think my wife jenna is absolutely gorgeous but she has some really negative body image issues this is in large part because of her younger sister mary who is very conventionally attractive 
as opposed to Jenna's more unconventional, but in my opinion, striking beauty. Mary was a successful model until a couple of years ago and now works in the fashion industry. In our early days of dating, when I would tell Jenna she is beautiful, she'd always say, just wait until you see my sister. When I did finally meet her family, she would randomly press me for weeks to talk about her sister, whether I thought she was more attractive than her, etc. I always told her the truth, that I think Mary is attractive in a boring way, and that I think my wife is much more beautiful and interesting to look at. She wouldn't let it go until I confronted her about how uncomfortable it made me, and I asked her what was going on. This is when she told me that she's always had a chip on her shoulder about her looks because of being compared with her sister growing up. They fell into the classic smart one, pretty one dynamic their whole lives. She also said that Mary had a habit of being flirty with all of her exes and warned me that it would happen to me eventually. She then started sobbing and begging me to not cheat on her with her sister, to which I forcefully said that I would never cheat on her with anyone, let alone her sister. I've been crazy about my wife since day one, and there's literally no woman on earth who could come close to her. I honestly didn't believe her about the flirting at first. I assumed it was just an extension of her insecurity. But I was wrong. Whenever we get together with my wife's family, Mary always finds ways to touch me and make little innuendos and comments about me or my body. It's super uncomfortable for everyone, especially my wife, and I've called Mary out on it before. She'll call it for a while, but eventually started doing it again. It's been six years of this, and every time it happens, my wife is upset for days, and I have to do a lot of reassuring. So on to the current problem. A few days ago, we were at my mother-in-law's birthday party, and Mary asked me to help her grab some things from the garage. As soon as we walked in, she turned and pressed me up against the door with her whole body and started trying to kiss me. I immediately pushed her off and asked her what the frick she was doing. She started giggling and saying she was just doing what we've both been thinking and kept insisting, you know you want to. I told her she was out of her mind and ran out of there. I went straight to my wife and told her we were leaving. The whole ride home, she was asking me what was wrong. I wasn't sure whether to tell her because I knew how much it was going to hurt, but I also thought that Mary would probably try to spin it as me making a move on her So I knew I had to just say it. I told her everything and she cried the whole way home. For the last several days, Mary has been calling and texting my wife, doing exactly what I thought she would do. Even telling my wife that I said that she, Mary, was the hottest girl I've ever seen, which I had to assure my wife a million times that I did not and would never say, even though she believes my account of the situation. She's been a complete wreck the last several days. She's hardly eating. She pulls away from my touch when I try to hug her or just hold her her hand she says she feels hideous and disgusting and i don't know what to do this is the lowest i've ever seen her and it hurts to see how much she's hurting i have no idea what to do to help her heal from this reddit what should i do honestly guys i I kind of have no idea what to even suggest here you've been doing the right thing in my opinion for such a long period of time now this is obviously such a deeply ingrained issue that your wife's had to deal with for pretty much her entire life right i mean it happened when she was a child it's happened with all her exes she's always had this comparison with her sister and the fact of the matter is she's right about her flirting with her exes which is absolutely crazy so it's not as if her worries and her fears are not without actual evidence as as we saw you know she actually does do this sort of stuff she tries to kiss her sister's partners unbelievable so because of all of that it's gonna be an extremely extremely challenging thing to try and get her to not think these sort of thoughts and to reassure her that no i really do love you and i don't care about your sister at all when she knows for a fact that her sister is making pass at you it's just an incredibly difficult one and i really don't even know what to do what can you do other than just keep doing what you've already been doing which kind of hasn't really been working anyway good news is this is best of redditor updates and there are a couple more updates to come the first one that i'm about to get into was posted just a couple of days later here we go i got a few requests for updates so here it is i first want to thank everyone so much for your advice it was extremely helpful and gave me a lot to think about i'm especially thankful for the folks that asked me how i was doing i realized that i've literally never had a chance to check in with myself after these things happen and i've actually been holding a lot of frustration and resentment about it all i've been harassed for years and it's either been brushed off or it's been eclipsed by the impact it has on my wife I don't blame her for it, but this has been a good lesson in me not burying my feelings for the sake of others, even for her. I also want to clarify a couple of things that came up. 
Several people asked about how my wife's family feels about all of this and I explained in a comment that her parents are toxic and treat Mary as the golden child. Even though my wife is a freaking neuroscientist, amazingly talented musician, speaks three languages fluently and another two conversationally. My wife and her family are seriously the only people who don't seem to understand how exceptional she is. I remember meeting one of my wife's family friends and talking to them about her research. And they said, oh wow, her parents just told us she works at a university. Whereas my parents literally introduce her as the family genius to everyone. It makes me so freaking angry to think about how her jerk family has stolen her shine her whole life. She's literally a renaissance woman, but all they care about is looks and money. Some folks asked me why I would ever put myself in a situation alone with Mary, given everything she's done. I have no good answers for that other than I never thought she would actually try to do anything. That possibility just didn't exist in my head. I realize now that I should have seen this would happen eventually and that I should have been less concerned with keeping the peace and more concerned with shutting Mary's trash down before it escalated to this point. Hindsight is 2020. All right, I gotta jump in here quickly. I completely disagree with that. It's ridiculous to think that you're never gonna be in a one-on-one situation with your wife's sister ever, like what, in the next forever of your life. It's gonna happen eventually. You shouldn't blame yourself for doing that. And also you were just being kind and helping out. That's not your fault at all. The situation was an inevitability. It's just a sad one. Anyway, on to the updates. The night I posted, I told my wife that if she wanted to try to repair her relationship with her sister, I would respect that, but that I don't feel comfortable being around her for the foreseeable future. I said, Mary has obviously been deeply jealous of my wife her whole life because she is a hollow, ugly person whose entire value has an expiration date while my wife actually has substance. I said that I think her whole family is toxic and has done nothing but put her down her whole life, but that only she can decide whether she still wants them in her life. Wow, and that answers my question as to what you should have done. That is the perfect thing to say. Brilliant. I also told my wife that while I don't blame her for her emotional reaction, her insecurity is something that she needs to work on for our relationship to be healthy. What Mary did was sexual assault and she's been sexually harassing me for years, but I've consistently put aside my own feelings about this problem because of how it affects her. And that has prevented me from getting the support that I need too. I told her that her reaction only serves to punish herself and me for her sister's behavior and there's no reason to give her that kind of power. I also told her something that a commenter said that really resonated with me. The only people who have ever considered her second best are her and her family. Everyone else sees her for who she really is. I've got to say, OP, you are saying angelic words here. Every single letter is perfect. She was crying the whole time and agreed that she needed to go to therapy to work on her insecurity. We were able to find a therapist who specializes in body image and self-esteem issues to work with her individually. And we're looking for a couples therapist too. My wife sent a message to her parents and sister that explained exactly what happened and told them she would reach out to them if she ever feels ready to repair their relationship. We blocked all of them everywhere, but Mary has of course been spamming my family and our friends with nonsense, claiming I attacked her, that I'm a drug addict, I abuse my wife, all kinds of BS that thankfully nobody believes. My wife is still down in the dumps, but I can see that things are getting a little better. She's eating and sleeping more and she's cuddling with me in the mornings again, which is nice. Now I'm planning a surprise getaway for us this weekend. We're going to one of our favorite places and I'm going to wine and dine her and try to make her feel like the goddamn queen that she is. I want to thank you all again for your help. You really help me understand the severity of the problem. And again, thanks for helping me connect with my own feelings about all of this. You guys are the best. But guys, fear not, because there is actually one more update that was posted on the 1st of February. So let's get into that. Hopefully, OP says it's the final update, but let's see. First, I want to say that I've gotten so many questions about who Mary is, and I'm just not gonna say. Suffice to say that she's never been household name famous, but she made a living solely on modeling for about a decade from what I understand. So she must have been popular enough that fashion people might know her. I really don't know how that world works, but in my opinion, it doesn't matter how many names you drop, you're not famous if you don't have a Wikipedia page. That is fair enough. Also got lots of comments that mostly jokingly called me a simp, and I can't argue with that. 
I totally am a simp for my wife. She's the coolest. I hope you all find a love that makes you feel this way. I completely agree. If you're going to simp for anyone in this life, it better be your wife. That is fair enough. Okay, I think that's it. So here is the actual updates. My wife loved the getaway weekend. We had a blast and by the end of it, she said she felt like herself again. For a few days after we got back, things were really quiet. So we were hopeful that Mary had finally given up, but I felt uneasy about it all. Many of you warned me that Mary would try to interfere with my work. And while I initially dismissed it, I figured I would reach out to my boss just in case. I've been working at the same company for almost 10 years and she's heard me vent about Mary before, so I didn't have to explain too much. My boss just reassured me that she knows my real character and would let me know if Mary tried anything. As predicted, Mary did try to contact my boss a couple of days later, and the following is a recounting of what my boss told me. Apparently, Mary said that I needed to be fired because I was a predator, and she claimed to have proof that I assaulted her. My boss said that that was a very serious accusation to make, and asked Mary to explain what proof she had. Mary claimed there was a camera that caught the whole incident. So my boss asked her to send the video. Then Mary got flustered and said the police had it. So my boss asked her to send over a copy of the police reports. Then Mary said that it had a lot of private information in it. So my boss asked her to redact the private information and send it over. Then Mary said that she didn't feel comfortable with that. And my boss told her that she could not take action against an employee based on word of mouth from a stranger. Then Mary shouted at her for victim blaming and hung up. But unfortunately, that was not the end of it. Last Wednesday, Mary somehow sent an email from my personal email account with a D pick, not mine, obviously, to the entire office. Oh my. My best guess is that I must have left my email logged in on one of my in-laws devices. She's definitely not smart enough to actually hack me. And I know this is completely besides the point, but of course, she chose the weirdest looking D I've ever seen. I played team sports all my life. I've seen a lot of D's, and this was something else. It's honestly kind of funny to think about Mary googling gross D or something and sifting through hundreds of images to find just the right one. I had to apologize to everyone on staff, and thankfully folks were surprisingly understanding. It's actually been kind of a nice bonding experience with my co-workers. I honestly didn't consider myself to be super well liked in the office, but it feels like everyone has been going out of their way to be kind to me, and it means a lot. Anyway, at this point, it was clear we had to escalate things legally. I really wanted to avoid it, but she forced my hand. My wife and I have a lawyer friend who helped us draft a cease and desist letter outlining her continued harassment and the material and emotional damage this is causing us. My wife then sent a message to Mary and my in-laws with a copy of the letter and made it very clear that we would pursue criminal and or civil proceedings if her harassment continued. My wife's mum then called her crying and begged her to just let it go and leave Mary alone. My wife calmly explained that Mary is the only person responsible for this whole situation and that their parents have always enabled her awful behavior she also says something that she later regretted but i think it was pretty badass mary is going to stick you two in a nursing home and steal your money the minute she has the chance and you deserve it after the way her mum reacted my wife is firmly settled on cutting off her family completely this happened on friday and on sunday mary's best friend of me Anne, sent my brother a message on facebook to say mary is going to leave us alone and to please not sue her i told my brother not to respond then just sat and enjoyed the idea that mary was out there somewhere freaking out about the potential of having to actually face the consequences of her actions It must be such a strange feeling for her. Since then, we haven't heard a peep from the grapevine. It feels like things are finally starting to go back to normal. My wife is starting therapy next week and will be starting couples therapy in a month or two. She wants to do some work on herself first. She's also taking a short leave from work to rest and recharge. I'm so proud of her for standing up for herself with her family and finally putting her mental health and well-being first. Thanks again for everyone who offered advice. This was a messy situation, but it definitely would have been messier without your help. And there we go. A great story with a pretty good ending, I will say. However, my immediate reaction to what I've just read there at the end is I kind of can't help but think that there's more to come here. Mary is the sort of person that hasn't really not got her way, it seems, throughout her entire life. This might be the first time in her life that she hasn't got the desired outcome that she wants. Therefore, I can't help but predict that she's going to come back into your guy's life in one way or another. It doesn't even matter if she's going to get sued or if the law is going to get involved or whatever. I just don't think she's going to give up that easy. 
I really fear for what she might do next. Get in the comments, guys. Do you reckon this story is done or do you think it's just the beginning? I don't really know. One way or another, I really do feel like this is not going to be the last we hear of Mary and that she may well end up in custody pretty soon. I'm leaving my boyfriend over a prank. I'm still a bit shaken up. So if this doesn't make much sense, I apologize. I am an 18 year old woman and I've been with my boyfriend who is 20 for almost two years. I moved in with him last August and things have been pretty rocky. My whole life, I've struggled with my mental health, specifically depression, anxiety, and SH. I've been clean for a while though. I also have a history of trauma, but I don't need to get into that. I made sure my boyfriend knew this when we started dating because I wanted him to be able to nope out of the relationship if that was too much for him to deal with. He assured me it wasn't an issue. He never really seemed to get the whole mental health thing though. He'd make comments saying stuff like depression is just spicy sad and people with trauma should just get over it. He also thinks that only veterans can get PTSD. I've tried explaining things to him, but he just brushes me off. So I do the best to ignore him. Recently, he started watching couple prank channels on YouTube and he started pranking me. At first, it was just small things like putting way too much flavor in my water or salt in a bite of my food. I laughed it off. It didn't really bother me. But then he started jumping out and scaring me. That kind of stuff really affects me sometimes because of my PTSD. And I tried to explain that to him. He would apologize, but then do it again the next day. I was getting annoyed and frustrated, but I tried to let it be. Things escalated last week when he put some noisemakers under the toilet seat in the middle of the night. I woke up to go to the bathroom and sat down. Boom. It being late at night, me being half awake and the loud noise all mixed together gave me a full-blown panic attack. I was on the bathroom floor crying and having flashbacks. After I don't know how long, I stopped crying and was just staring into space, having flashbacks. He came in because I guess he noticed I was gone for a while. When he saw me sitting on the floor, he remembered his little prank and started laughing. I just stared at him for a second, got up and called him a jerk. I slept in the living room the rest of the night. The next day, I sat him down and I told him he cannot keep scaring me like this. No more jumping out at me. No more loud noises. He pretty much sighed and rolled his eyes, but he said he would stop. Everything was fine for a week. I thought this whole prank thing was finally over. Yesterday, I got home from being out with a friend, actually feeling better for the first time in a while. When I walked in the house, all the lights were off, so I assumed he was still at work, which isn't abnormal because sometimes he works late. I plugged my phone in because it died on my way back home, and when it powered on, I got a notification that he sent me a text. It just read, So sorry, I love you. I replied saying, It's okay, I'll see you when you get home. Love you. And I heard his phone ding in the bathroom. That was weird, I thought. I got up to go get his phone. And when I got into the bathroom, I saw him laying in the bathtub. The bath was full of water. There was an empty bottle of pills on the sink. And he was covered in blood. His wrists were cut. And there was just so much blood. My heart just sank. I started having a panic attack. I was hyperventilating, crying. And I was just frozen. After a minute, I ran to the living room to get my phone to call 911 and I hear splashing and then laughter. I turn around to see him standing in the hallway, just laughing. He said he got me and I should have seen the look on my face. I don't even know how to describe the feelings I was experiencing. I was so mad and sad and scared. I didn't even say anything. I just walked out of the house. I just kept walking and eventually I figured I needed to call my friend to come and get me. At first, I didn't tell her what happened. I just told her I needed her to come and get me. It was an emergency. She came and took me back to her house where I'm at now. My boyfriend keeps calling me and he sent me some texts saying he was sorry and that it was just a joke and I'm overreacting and I need to come home. I'm not answering. I don't even know what I would say to him. My friend is going over to his house tomorrow to get my things when he's at work. She said I can stay with her however long I need. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just feel numb. Wow, and there we go. What a first post. Let's get straight into an update which came just one day later. Thankfully, today wasn't as eventful as I was expecting it to be. I ended up sending my now ex-boyfriend a text saying that he crossed the line and I don't want to hear from him again. I blocked him on everything after sending that and I'm planning on changing my number tomorrow. 
My friend went over to his house around noon today with her boyfriend and was able to retrieve most of my stuff without issue She got all my personal documents sentimental items medication and clothes The only things she wasn't able to grab were the tv and xbox I paid for because i'm not sure how I can go about getting those back without him accusing me of stealing them I'm, not sure that fight is even worth it right now before she left She put my copy of his house key on the kitchen table. So he knew I didn't have it She wanted to unplug his fridge and all his appliances just to make things harder for him But I told her not to I really didn't want to add fuel to the fire His mum reached out to me to ask what was going on Apparently he called her and told her that I had some sort of mental breakdown and ran away and that he was worried about me I told her what happened and what he did. She was fuming She said she thought she raised him better than that and that she was sorry he did what he did She said that if I need anything I can let her know and she'll do what she can to help me I guess his mum told his older sister what happened and she also reached out to me to apologize for his behavior Now I wasn't close to her but I met her a few times and she is a really nice person She offered to help with anything I needed and told me that she was going to make sure everyone knows what actually happened I told her that wasn't necessary, but I appreciate it But she said that she wasn't going to let her brother get away with this i'm not going to argue so i thanked her for the most part i've just been lying in bed today i'm so exhausted physically and emotionally i wish i'd left him sooner there were red flags that i just ignored i guess i was afraid of being alone i don't know i'm trying not to blame myself for this whole situation but i feel like i put myself in this position this is what i get i'm not expecting much else to happen god i hope nothing else happens I'll probably give one more update in a few days as long as things have cooled down. If something significant happens, you'll hear from me. Thank you all for your kind words and your advice. It's very much appreciated and definitely needed. And as of the time of recording, that is the last update we've had up to this point. I guess there's not really too much more to come, right? OP's broken up with him. That really, I hope, should be the end. Now, I can't help but agree with your last point there, OP. I saw some red flags right off the bat. I mean, literally in the second paragraph of this entire thing, when you said that your boyfriend doesn't get the whole mental health thing, it's something that is so pertinent to your life that you've tried to explain to him. And for him not to get it, you just can't be a match if that is the case. I'm sorry. He just can't. Not to mention the fact that he's then going on and doing these ridiculous pranks. And the full knowledge, by the way, that you suffer from PTSD, anxiety, depression, etc., etc. Yeah, from that moment... Even the first initial pranks, you probably should have been like, uh, what's this guy doing? Let's get him gone. But, you know, you've given your reasons. You didn't want to be on your own. I get it. It's a tough spot for you. But my word, thankfully, you got rid of him very, very quickly after he did that ridiculous prank and for those listening on audio i'm i'm doing you know air quotes here what has happened to the whole pranking scene i mean thankfully the pranking scene on youtube did seem to die a few years ago with ridiculous pranks like that one somehow going viral and getting crazy views i think the word prank has been lost in translation over the past 10 years or so used to be fun and funny now it's oh look there's blood everywhere and i might be dead but it's just a prank bro yeah very very strange Let's carry on. Okay then, now for our next best of Redditor updates post. Am I the jerk for leaving my boyfriend and his friends behind after agreeing to be the designated driver? I am a 33 year old woman and my boyfriend who is also 33 of four years is a big football fan and he has a tradition of meeting up with his high school friends at a bar for Super Bowl every year. It's often the only time in a year he gets to see some of those friends because they're busy with their families and life. I don't like football, so I'm happy to be able to drop him off somewhere, have an evening to myself and pick him up when he's ready to come home. He tends to go hard with the alcohol when he's out with this group. Last night, my boyfriend texted me that he was almost ready to be picked up, so I headed to the bar. He wasn't as ready as he made it seem, so I ended up going in and sitting down with them while everyone finished their round of drinks. He was pretty drunk, and he started getting handsy in a way that I wasn't comfortable with out in public, so I politely asked him to stop. I didn't want to make a scene, so I leaned in to whisper in his ear, asking to stop. He got angry though, and whispered back, you should consider yourself lucky that I'm going home with you. I could go home with any woman here if I wanted to. He couldn't, but he's always been a dreamer. I was taken aback as he's never said anything like that to me before. I get he was drunk, but still. Anger set in and I excused myself as if I was going to the bathroom. I ended up leaving and texted him to let him know I left. Unfortunately, he'd arranged for me to drive two of his friends home too. 
wouldn't have been an issue but he also hadn't communicated that with me instead of calling an uber or taxi like i assumed he would one of his friends called his wife the wife had to wake their toddler up to go and pick them up Sorry, that's even more dumb. What what am I reading? My boyfriend was furious when he came home and still is this morning. He slept on the couch and we had an argument before he left for work. He says I embarrassed him by just up and leaving. He vehemently denies saying what he did, doesn't recall getting handsy and insists he wasn't that drunk last night. I also got an angry text from the wife saying I was a jerk for leaving them drunk and stranded, forcing her to wake up her toddler to go and pick them up. She also had a vague passive aggressive facebook post calling me out now i'm questioning whether i overreacted Maybe I should have just brushed off his comment because he was drunk and followed through on the commitment I made I just felt so disrespected by what he said after I asked him to stop doing something that was making me uncomfortable So am I the jerk for leaving my drunk boyfriend and his friends stranded after the super bowl? Okay guys before we even get into the update I have to give my thoughts because there is absolutely no way for so many reasons that you are the jerk in this story I mean that's just a hundred percent. It's not even up for debate. It's so not up for debate I don't even know if it's worth talking about. What I actually want to focus on is who is worse. Your husband for making those disgusting comments and then being upset that you left after you told him not to make them. Or his friend for calling his wife to go and pick them up in the middle of the night, waking up the toddler to go and do it when you have just said you could have got a taxi or an Uber. Like which is worse? And then also the wife being angry at you for not doing it rather than at her husband. I don't know. Okay, fine. Obviously your husband is worse. But still, from their perspective as a group, surely you just get a taxi, get an Uber, like split it. It would be so cheap. I don't get it. If there's an Uber available, you get an Uber. You don't call your wife. That's just weird. Especially in the knowledge that you have a toddler at home. Are you really going to expect your wife to come and pick up loads of drunk guys? Bring the toddler with her? Because you can't leave the toddler alone at home. Yeah, I mean, logic's gone out the window here, clearly. Okay then, just five hours later, OP posted this. Thanks for everyone's feedback, responses, and stories. To answer a few common questions and comments. First, he's never said anything like he did to me before. He can push my boundaries from time to time, but has always respected them when I've said no or stop. We've had a really solid relationship up until this point, but this has left me with a lot of questions. And I, for one, personally, guys, I'm not going to have the comment of, oh, he was drunk. You know, you can say weird things when you're drunk, fine. But that is like bordering on harassment. I don't care what sort of state you're in. You can't say that. And then also denying that you said it to a sober person. It's just not going to go down well. He doesn't go out often, but when he does, he usually binge drinks, especially with the group last night. He reverts to high school frat boy mode. Nothing wrong with that, in my opinion, by the way. The only problem is if your behavior then becomes like it did. This was his high school group of friends that I have limited interaction with. I've got my group of friends and then we also have our group of couple friends. I don't know the wife at all except for a couple of dinners over the years. Truthfully, his high school friends aren't my cup of tea so I don't interact with them much. Now, the reason I decided to just slip away and text him was because I didn't want to make a scene. After what he'd said when I tried to set boundaries, I couldn't predict how he would react. I didn't want him shouting or saying something else demeaning out loud and he was very unpredictable last night it seems the wife wasn't told the whole story i did respond to her text with an apology and explanation went so well that she left me on red and has left the facebook status up speaks more to her at this point yeah i got the indication and the inclination that she also wasn't the nicest of people just based on her reaction I didn't know until I got to the bar to pick him up that I was also driving his friends home. In normal circumstances, it wouldn't have been an issue at all. A heads up would have definitely been nice, but I probably should have ensured rides were arranged for them before leaving. No, that's not your issue. I've decided to stay with a close friend for a few days to figure things out. My boyfriend and I have built a life together, but I'm not sure we can recover from this. I don't want our relationship to be contingent on stopping drinking or no longer hanging out with this group of friends or the promise that it won't happen again. From experience, ultimatums don't work and lead to resentments. All right then, and now moving on to the actual update of this post, which came on February the 14th, the next day. First of all, thank you to everyone who took some time to respond. I read as many of your comments as I could. Thanks for sharing some of your stories, and I wish I could hug each of you that were or are in my situation. 
I really appreciate the support and also some of the honesty in the jerk judgments. Guys, it might be quite obvious, but just to say, OP was voted pretty much unanimously as not the jerk in this story. Some of what happened could have been handled differently. I acknowledge that me leaving without saying anything wasn't the best of decisions in hindsight, but at that moment, it was the only decision I felt I had given the shock of what happened and the flight response it triggered. I've done a whole lot of reflection. I don't know why this incident was the catalyst because looking back, there's a lot I let slide at the cost of my self-worth. I had my blinders on and ignored things I shouldn't have, which I'm embarrassed to admit. However, I still felt like we could work through things. At the very least, we needed to talk. I'd hoped that we could have an open conversation about what happened and ideally a plan to move forward. So, my boyfriend and I met up today for the Valentine's dinner that we had reservations for. The dinner was pretty emotional and didn't go as I hoped. I apologize for leaving his friend stranded as a way of me showing to him that I took responsibility for my actions, even though I feel even more justified thanks to you guys. But he unfortunately wasn't willing to do the same. He still denies doing and saying what he did, despite remembering everything else that happened while he was at the bar. And he actually doubled down again about me embarrassing him, now not only by leaving them at the bar, but for also having the audacity to respond back to his buddy's wife He said that they were his friends and I had no business airing our laundry to them or involving them in our issues. Oh my God. This guy is worse than I actually thought he was. My word. I just can't comprehend how someone who supposedly loves me can't accept responsibility for his actions or at the very least acknowledge he hurt me. He obviously doesn't respect me. It's done and over. I can't do it anymore. We're going to go our separate ways. I told him as much. We own a house together, so it's going to be a process, but I feel oddly content with my decision. So thanks again to all you internet strangers that lifted me up and offered supportive words. I could not have walked out of the restaurant so confident in my decision if it wasn't for you guys. Wow, the power of Reddit. I'm back at my friend's place now with a hot cup of tea and Woman's Worth by Elisa Milk on repeat. As the lyrics say, holy heck, I'm tired of loving a man who acts like a child. And holy heck, I'm done with losing my mind just to love someone. And I am. I'm done. And there we go. Great decision by OP. What has shocked me there is that you've been together clearly with this man for quite a while. I don't know if you explicitly said, actually, no, you did, didn't you? Didn't you say you've been together for what? Four years? Is that right? Yes, you've been together for four years and this is the first sign, it seems to me, and obviously we only are going on off of what we've just read here, that he's ever got that side to him. The side that remembers everything else on a night, but then can't remember that one thing that you're talking about and also refuses to apologize for it. Now guys, I can only think of something that happened to me, which was very similar in this situation. It was actually with my um, ex-girlfriend before we were together. We were just seeing each other. And I had a moment like this. I had a night where I was with her and her mates and also my mate. And I got way too drunk. And I didn't say anything like this. Honestly, like I'm not a great geezer, but I would like this is ridiculous. I wouldn't say any of this stuff. This is just obscene. However, I did get too drunk and I pretty much wasn't aware of my actions. And it turns out I was kind of ignoring her. Now, fair enough. I don't remember any of it because I was absolutely battered. Don't do this, guys, if you're watching. Trust me, it wasn't great. Um, And she was upset because it was like a first big night out and I just got so waved. Uh, And it was a lesson for me. However, we talked about it. I fully apologized. I had no idea what I'd done, but she was telling me some of the stuff I'd done. And I was like, okay, honestly, in that moment, that wasn't me. I'm so sorry. I don't remember any of that. I would never do that again. I, I, I wasn't sober, obviously. But the point being that in that spot, I wasn't saying, oh, I don't remember doing that. Therefore, I can't apologize for it. I was like full on apologizing for everything that I'd done because of course I had no idea if I'd done it or not, but she said I had, so therefore I had. And therefore, the fact that this guy isn't doing the same is just kind of crazy. Like you can do bad things. If you apologize for them and say, look, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. I really genuinely am sorry. Then what more can you do? It's safe to say I haven't had a moment like that since. So I've learned from that. And clearly this guy hasn't because he's now not in a relationship. There you go. Just getting back to the actual post now. 
this, I'll, I'll just based on what I said at the start, I can't quite get my head around the fact that this is the first time that he's ever done something like this. I just, I just can't see how that's possible. That after four years, this is the first time that something like this has happened, and it's to such like a drastic extent. Like this is a pretty major incident. Not just what happened on the night, but the fact that he doesn't take any responsibility for it afterwards, and then even goes in on you. Like you're the one apologizing when you never should need to, and he isn't. That's crazy. Maybe if you think about it now that everything has been and gone, as we saw in the first post, you'll think back to more red flags that could have shown themselves earlier, which you just didn't really clock or maybe just didn't see as that big of an issue at the time. But looking back now, you're like, ah, it all adds up. I mean, I at least hope that's what's going to happen because otherwise, if somebody can just switch up on you after four years of being in a relationship, that doesn't fill me with much confidence, I will say. But there we go. Great story nonetheless. I thoroughly enjoyed it. My wife told me to shut my mouth in front of a bunch of people at a kid's birthday party. Now, this was originally posted on August the 21st, 2022. My wife and I are at odds lately over her sister-in-law, who is also her best friend, who is married to her brother. Long story short, she bends over backwards to accommodate their every ask, including babysitting, errands, etc. This extends to volunteering me to help them without my knowledge or consent. She never sees my point of view or agrees with any criticism of them that I have. We were at my nephew's birthday party today. My sister-in-law is the one who's hosting it, so my wife is super keen for things to go well. Things were going okay. My daughter, who is three, was a bit upset because her balloon animal accidentally was popped. So she's standing with my wife, getting a cuddle, and a boy, older than her, about five or six, sprints into her and knocks her over. She's crying, obviously, and I pick her up. My wife is making a joke of it, saying, oh, she needs to watch where she's going. But I said back to her, don't blame her for getting bowled over by the bigger boy. Now, apparently the mother of this other kid was an earshot, which prompted my wife to tell me in front of one of her other best friends and a couple of other guests to shut my mouth. Then she had the cheek to tell me to not have a moody face. 15 minutes before this post, I sent an email to a divorce lawyer for a consultation. I finally reached my limits. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was sort of expecting that final sentence. Uh, it seems as if this was definitely the turning point or the tipping point, let's just say, to lots of other things that have come before this for OP. We're gonna get into an update almost immediately from the same post, of course. But I will say that, yeah, although it's obviously not very nice to have your wife tell you in front of other people to shut up or shut your mouth at a kid's birthday party. I mean, to be fair, that is pretty terrible. Some other stuff must have come before that. There must be some pent up, you know, stuff going on there to actually call a divorce lawyer immediately afterwards. But anyway, let's see what happens next. So then the first update. Firstly, I'd just like to thank everyone for your responses, supportive or otherwise. Being heard and listened to is such a mental boost. I spoke to my solicitor first thing this morning and we had a good talk. He knows that I'm angry and upset at the situation and he says that he'll get myself and my wife in for a consultation if we decide to go down that route. The issue in Scotland is that for a divorce where only one party wants out, it can take upwards of a year to get it and evidence of separation in that period, unless both parties agree to unreasonable behavior as the reason for the court granting the divorce. Long story short, I can't proceed without her buy-in if I want it resolved fast. So I took my daughter to my mum's after this and then I sat my wife down. I told her that yesterday's situation was absolutely unacceptable and that if I told her to shut her mouth in front of my friends, that I'd be getting crucified by everyone we know. I told her she was lucky I kept my mouth shut at the party and that I didn't give an F about how her sister-in-law would have taken it. We fought again about her sister-in-law and again, she defended her actions, saying that I'm the selfish one who won't help out my family when they need it. I then did the perhaps petty move of dropping divorce leaflets that I printed from my solicitor's website in front of her. I said to her, I absolutely want to help my family and this is how I do it. I told her about how I was tired of playing third wheel in my own marriage and I told her that I was not prepared to subject my daughter to a lifetime of this subservience. Finally, it looks like what I've said has had an impact. She cried and I think she was close to having a panic attack. This made me feel guilty because fundamentally, I don't think she's a bad person. She's just brainwashed into thinking that her sister-in-law is the second coming of the Messiah. So she promised that when I finish work today, we can have a serious talk about things and she'll listen to my concerns. Right now, I'm not buying it. 
but I owe her and my daughter at least a chance to sort things out. So I'll see where it goes. To answer some questions that folks had, I know this seemed like an overreaction to something, but you've got to understand that this was the latest in a long line of sister-in-law related issues. Some folks have asked if my wife might be gay and in love, and I have thought about this as a possibility. I haven't asked her yet, but I may tonight. It does certainly seem logical given how passionate she gets about it. Okay, so that is it for the first update, but just a day later, we got a second. So we sat down last night for the crunch talks. I have to give her credit where it's due. She apologized for what she said at the party, and she said that she'd also have considered divorce if I'd done the same to her. I reiterated to her that my issue is that she completely makes herself subservient to her sister-in-law at our expense. I pointed out how messed up it was that she didn't immediately take our daughter's side in this incident. The collision was accidental, I think, but I told her that to blame the little one was out of line, which she accepted. I then asked her outright if she had any sort of romantic feelings for her sister-in-law. She squirmed and looked a little uncomfortable. She said that a long time ago at the end of high school, there had been a drunken kiss on a night out, but nothing beyond that. She sort of played the angle that she didn't want anyone, especially her brother, to know about it. And that's why she bends over backwards to make sure her sister-in-law is happy. I asked her if her sister-in-law had ever threatened to reveal this incident, but she denies that it's even been brought up. She just thinks that if the wider family knew, it would bring up a lot of weirdness. She swears that she has no interest in having any kind of relationship with her and that she's straight. I told her I didn't care about what she did that long ago, but that it needed to stop impacting our relationship in the present because I am the thinnest of thin hairs away from walking away forever. She surprisingly apologized again and said that she'd really try to work on it. I told her that I needed to see some proof of that so she can consider herself on probation i told her that if i feel that it's happened again i'll be taking our daughter to stay at my mum's she accepted this so we're proceeding cautiously and guys that was the end of the story for a very long time a good six seven months however april the third of this year we got another update remember the original was posted in august of 2022 so a lot of people thought that perhaps that was going to be the end and we're wondering what would happen next but yeah in april we got another update. Now, I will just say quickly before we get into it, it seems quite encouraging right now. I mean, the fact that your wife's accepting of all of this and is apologizing. However, the fact that I can see there's another update is not necessarily a good thing, but hey, we'll see. Here we go. I've posted here many times about issues I've had with my wife, most commonly with regards to her subservience to her best friend turned sister-in-law. She's promised to try and work on this, given how much it's impacted our marriage, but today, I think we passed the point of no return. You see, today is my birthday. It's past midnight now, though. This morning, my daughter, who is nearly four, gave me huge hugs and kisses, which was great. My wife gave me a card and told me that my gift hadn't arrived in the post yet. My suspicion is that she's yet to order it, or ordered it late, whatever it may be. I then logged into my work and did my shift like any other day. My wife was off work while my daughter was at my mum's for a visit. Nothing special was planned for the evening because there were plans in place already. Just that those plans didn't include me. My wife's sister-in-law and a couple of my wife's other friends had arranged to go out for dinner and drinks because a voucher that her sister-in-law had for a particular restaurant expired soon and my birthday was the only date they could all make. Terrible, right? Well, it gets better though, because my wife made a big social media post wishing me a happy birthday, saying how terrible it was that I had to work all night on my birthday, which is a complete lie, but it does make her look less bad in public for not spending my birthday with me. The issue is, because she's done this, I now couldn't make plans with friends or family without exposing her lie. So yeah, great birthday. When I think about how she'd react if I'd pulled half the stuff that she's pulled, I can't see it ending any other way than me getting screamed at, even though she's chosen to spend my birthday with her sister-in-law instead of me. On the plus side, I did some Warhammer painting after I collected my daughter and played with her a bit before bed. She also asked why mummy wasn't here, which kind of crushed me. Am I wrong to be annoyed about this? And there we go. My worst fears have come to fruition. It is really not looking good for you two, is all I'll say. Um, First of all, of course, you're not wrong to be annoyed about this. Are you joking? She's actively said that, that she's she's doing something else because you're busy. Like making up this entire rumor and just downright lie on social media to make herself look good and allow her to go and do things with her friends on your birthday. 
actually insane. I remember, guys, this is coming off the back of that that heart to heart conversation. Well, I thought it was heart to heart, and I thought the apologies were, were legit back in August 2022 when we saw the previous update, where your wife literally said, "Okay, I will focus on the marriage now and our daughter." not on my sister-in-law but no on your actual birthday on her husband's birthday she's off gallivanting with the girls uh and that's pretty tough not gonna lie this does feel like this marriage may be coming to an end but there is one more update that was posted 12 days later i'm not gonna give any spoilers but let's just say this is a conclusion here we go i've separated from my wife hi again everyone i just wanted to say firstly thank you very much for all of your responses and private messages Many of you were supportive and many of you rightfully upon reflection told me that I needed to grow some backbone and sort my stuff out I've been sitting on this for a few days because the full events of what has transpired since then have blown my mind And I brought home some very harsh truths about my relationship But I also wanted to see if what went down would actually stick and so far it has the fun question out of the way first For those who were asking about my painting. I was painting some thousand sons terminators Okay, so starting the day after my birthday my wife initiated sex and let me tell you this was an occasion in itself I legitimately could not tell you the last time that this happened. It's been that long i'm thinking to myself maybe she's feeling guilty about yesterday and she's trying to make it up after the deed was done she turns around to me and says your present won't be here for another couple of days that will have to do for now i'm pretty disappointed at this point not because i had a huge desire for a particular gift but because she felt that her behavior the day before was fine and then for her to think ah oh, i'll use sex to cover up my screw up well that was also a bit of a blow Whatever, I've sucked up worse before and powered through. What broke me was her opinion on her sister-in-law's birthday. Long story short, for those who don't know, she is possibly my least favorite person on the planet due to her parasitic behavior and main character syndrome. Coincidentally, it's a couple of weeks after mine. My wife told me all about her birthday plans for her. She wanted to get her a gift for her favorite massage therapist. What was the big deal? The shop only sells paper vouchers and it's a three hour round trip to the shop. So off she went, again leaving me with my daughter and what commenced next can only be described as three hours of my brain simmering slowly towards an explosion. I took my daughter to my brother's house because I knew that when my wife came back, I was going to explode. When she came back, I was sitting in the living room with a bag packed for me and in an admittedly petty move, one pack for my daughter. This immediately got her attention and she demanded to know what was going on. I unloaded it all. It wasn't coherent and I definitely got more emotional as I unloaded more grievances. I started by telling her it was unacceptable how she completely screwed up my birthday while making her sister-in-law's birthday a major priority. How I was sick of feeling like a third wheel in my own marriage. How I'd literally sacrificed my personality on the altar of keeping her happy. And how I never saw my friends anymore, yet she could do whatever she wanted. How I take care of the house despite working more hours than her for not even a shred of gratitude. How she used a lack of sex as a tool of manipulation and control. I cried and shouted. She did the same and vehemently denied all of my accusations. She demanded to know where our girl was and I told her. But I told her that she would not be using her as a bargaining chip against me We eventually calmed down enough to agree that I would keep her at our house while she temporarily stayed with her mum and dad I agreed to drop her off for visits while we work things out. It's been a few emotionally exhausting days I feel drained spent and tired, but I have my little girl and I feel like I have done what I could I don't know what my relationship status is right now We've not been speaking except to arrange drop-offs and i'm comfortable with that for now I need some more time before I consider more permanent steps I've never ever unloaded on her like this before but jesus christ it felt good Even if she continued to deny everything and there we go that is the conclusion of that one. Wow, a lot of stuff just happened at the end there that I can't quite believe, but maybe I should have seen it coming. You know, the whole time, the semi-crocodile tears, the fake apologies. I don't know, guys. I want you to comment down below on whatever platform you're on. Do you think that OP's wife, I mean, maybe now ex-wife, it's getting towards that stage, is in love or at least has some sort of romantic desire for her sister-in-law because she she openly admitted there was a drunken kiss she's lied about other things so maybe she's lied about there being more there and she did seem very sheepish and also she clearly just loves her as a person anyway even if it's not romantic 
I don't know. I reckon there's a lot more going on there that, that OP hasn't really found out about um, because his wife isn't really saying all of the truth. I reckon she is in love with a woman. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. But I think that might just be the, the cornerstone, the uh, the big key to this entire story. I will say this this whole story was really interesting on, on the behalf of OP because I do kind of agree with some of the comments going along that at, surely at some point, like you grow a backbone, right? You need to stand up for yourself. Why are you protecting your wife on social media when she's the one that's kind of just being an absolute rat to you? You know, if your wife says, oh, it's a shame that my husband is working on his birthday and that's the reason why I'm doing these things with my friends. Why don't you just say, on social media this is a lie or just tell people yeah that's actually just not true she's just going to see her sister-in-law i get it you want to keep things um you know acrimonious you want to keep the peace but and you're probably a very nice guy as well a selfless guy that just doesn't want to cause too much drama whereas your wife is clearly the very opposite of that but i will say that yeah maybe you could have stepped things up a little bit earlier i do love that you did it eventually op as you said at the end right there, Jesus Christ, it felt good to unload. I feel like you have a lot of pent up things that you need to say there and lots of grievances, as you said, and it's good to actually finally get them out and take those active steps towards a better life for you and your daughter. Let's be completely honest. But yeah, I do kind of think that maybe you could have gone a little bit earlier, given that you had already mentioned about calling a divorce law and all that stuff in August of 2022. And we're now, what, seven, eight months down the line and you're still not divorced. But that's just me. I'm not in that situation. I don't have a daughter, so it's tough to know. Guys, as always, get your comments in down below. I want to hear your thoughts. My boyfriend's friends pretended to kidnap me for a proposal. I am trembling and I just created this alt account because my main has a lot of details about me that would make it easy to trace back. A week ago, my boyfriend told me he had a camping trip planned with his friends on Friday, today. He said he'd have no service and he'll see me on Sunday. He messaged me at 5 a.m. this morning and told me they're hitting the road. At around 8, I went for a run like I usually do on Fridays. I have one headphone in while I do because I was on a work call. While I was running, I noticed an SUV that kept popping up. In hindsight, it looked just like my boyfriend's childhood friend's car. I sent a message to my sister saying to stand by and shared my location. Right after sending the message, I looked up and the SUV was right beside me and someone jumped out and grabbed me. It happened so fast that I even dropped my phone on the pavement. I was pulled into this car and I could tell there was at least two masked guys in the back before they covered my eyes. In hindsight, they had cartoonish ski masks and black gloves on. I freaked out and resisted like crazy, screaming and kicking. All I could hear was these guys laughing and I could feel one of them holding me down by my arms behind me and the other holding my legs down at my knees. I don't know how long I was in there, but I kept begging them to let me go and crying. I even admit I peed myself, but I don't think they'd noticed until we arrived at the house. They pulled me out of the car and I was screaming for help until I was pulled into the house. When the mask on my head was removed, I was on my knees in front of my boyfriend of two years. He was staring at me with a confused look before he started to angrily ask his friends what was going on. As I started to adjust to what was going on, I realized he was dressed nicely and there were romantic decorations around the entryway to the house. I realized who he was and what was going on and I collapsed into sobs. I probably had a five minute panic attack in that car on my way there and another one sitting in the entryway to his house. I was sweaty, wearing soiled yoga pants, flushed with fear, scared for my life. That was all about an hour or two ago. My boyfriend took me upstairs and was going to help me get showered and changed, but I wanted to do that alone. I heard yelling and commotion downstairs while I showered, but I didn't know what was going on. I'm sitting in his room now, holding my shattered phone after crying to my sister about what happened. She lives an hour and a half away, but is speeding over to get me now. I can't stop thinking about what happened. And even though I know now that I was never in any danger, I don't think my brain can comprehend it. They were snickering and teasing me in deepened voices about what they were going to do to me. The one that was holding my legs down kept caressing my thighs up and down into the inner area. When the car would break, his face kept falling into my chest. I don't even know who that was. I just know that one of them sounded unsure and kept trying to defuse the situation, but I think it was the driver. Wow, what a crazy start to the story. As I said in the intro, there are many updates to come and we're gonna get into them in just a few moments. But first of all, what do I even say to that? Comment down below, guys. What are your immediate reactions to what I've just read? I would love to know so many things. Like I have so many questions and all will be revealed in the updates. But first thing that comes to my mind is, 
Did the boyfriend really know how crazy this was going to be? Are they his close friends? Why did he do this in the first place? Why on earth were they touching you and, you know, getting close to you in that sort of way? Oh, it's crazy. I don't know if this was supposed to be some sort of prank that just went wrong. But the fact of the matter is, it was just a horrible, horrible experience for you. And OP, off the bat, before we get into any updates... I am so sorry that this happened. Okay, so first of all, in the comments down below, a lot of people were discussing whether or not the boyfriend was involved or to what extent he was involved. And OP had this to say. I don't think he knew how they were going to do it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he used the words kidnap and they took it too far. He's never given a red flag before, but if his friends are crazy like this, I need to reevaluate him too. I'm not sure, and I don't want to immediately talk to him. I think I'm feeling traumatized or something because I just can't physically talk to anyone except my sister. Guys, remember that OP is writing this and responding to comments pretty soon after the fact, right? She's still in the house upstairs with her sister just a couple of hours after this all happened. The next question from the comments was if OP's boyfriend is from a culture where something like this is more common, but OP instantly says no. He's ethnically from the Middle East and I'm from Eastern Europe. Very similar backgrounds, actually. We were both born and raised in America and we're both culturally and socially very Western slash American. And then finally, one commenter asks if OP could possibly stay with her sister and get some space from her boyfriend. And OP says that they don't actually live with their boyfriend at all. So either way, I'll stay with my sister a city away or she'll stay with me tonight. Okay then, so let's get into an update. This one was posted five hours later. I'm working with police now. This is going to be investigated as a false imprisonment if I press charges. My sense of time was so warped. From where I was picked up to his house was about seven or 10 minutes in the car, but it felt like way longer than that. As for the friends, the driver was his childhood best friend who I actually get along well with. He was in tears when he voluntarily arrived at the police station for a statement. The other two were friends from his athletics class that he started attending a few months ago. It seems like the two guys I didn't know wanted in on what otherwise was supposed to be something more innocent. The original plan was for them to pop out of this car in their funny kidnapping attire and hand me a letter that explained I was being summoned by my boyfriend and that resistance is futile. It seems though like the plan changed as the two new friends wanted to shake me up a bit more and make it feel more real. Okay, so there we go. I guess a little insight into how involved OP's boyfriend was in all of this. Now, you could argue that it's not really the boyfriend's fault because he didn't actually say to his friends to do this. It was them doing this themselves and it was, you know, just out of his hands. However, I would say to that that he was the one who chose to kind of put this all into place in the first place. He was the one that employed his two friends to do this, right? Said, do this, do this. And ultimately, if you're going to be trusting two friends that you've only known for a few months in your proposal to your girlfriend, you know, the woman that you want to be with for the rest of your life, that's a very important moment, then that's kind of a bad thing for you to do, right? I mean, you're trusting two guys that you've barely known to do something that's so important. Very, very risky, and that ultimately is your fault, even though they obviously didn't do what you asked them to do. As for the two guys, I mean, they're just complete wrongins, right? Like, what are they doing? Seriously, what are they doing? The driver, fair enough, probably was focused on the road and was like, guys, what are you doing? This is very, very uncomfortable. And you can see the remorse later on in this post. But for the two guys themselves, like, how are you even mates with them in the first place? That is what I just don't really understand. Okay, now for the next update. I've had time to calm down and had long talks with my sister. We're going to meet up with my ex-boyfriend for dinner tonight. That's with a question mark, by the way, I guess unsure at this moment. He's been respectful of my request for space, but has been emotional whenever he thinks about what I went through this morning. His best friend contacted me repeatedly, apologizing for allowing it to get that far, but I asked for him to stop and he did. The best friend's fiance reached out and has been supportive and apologetic too. I am astounded at the support I've received here and I wish I could thank each of you individually. I've never had anyone other than my sister and boyfriend care for my mental well-being like this. Reddit is a very kind place sometimes. And then finally, we got this update just a week or so ago. In short, I'm healing. My now fiance had a private proposal with me last week. Oh, wow. You know what? I'll be honest, guys. I really didn't expect that, but I was kind of hopeful. We had many tough conversations and his responses to everything reminded me how safe and loved I am by him. He didn't ask for or endorse that type of plan. I've learned that the two friends whom I didn't know were highly influenced by YouTube pranksters and social experiment channels. 
Also, one of them let us know he's on the spectrum and apologized for his part. Okay, fine, but just because you're on the spectrum doesn't mean you can go around actually properly kidnapping people. Come on. I think that's all I can share for now. I'm only consulting right now and I may not actually press charges. Once again, thank you so much for all the kindness and support. Opening my inbox today warmed my heart incredibly. Now there is one final edit from OP saying this. There are a lot of people who disagree with me staying with my fiance. I'm sorry I couldn't explain in detail how confident I am in him throughout this. Please read carefully before passing judgments. And I'm sorry I couldn't please everyone with my decisions. But after further response, I think pressing charges is the best course of action. Maybe I'm a bit too tender hearted, but I didn't want the former best friend to get some flack too. But it seems he has to. Yeah, that is a tough one right there. I don't really know how I feel about that. I think I completely agree with OP in reality. Yeah, you don't want the driver who is actually probably a good person and it, it really wasn't on them, was it? I mean, there was going to be a driver no matter what happened, even if OP had been handed the note as planned and it had been relatively fun, they were they were still going to be involved. So it's a tough one on their behalf. Uh, but ultimately, if you're going to press charges on those other two and you have to do that, and I'm really happy that you have done, then yeah, sadly, the driver, the childhood friend is going to be caught up in one way or another. But you know, if you show remorse and you say, look, I'm so sorry, I didn't expect it to happen like this. And I was just driving the car and it was all planned out like this. And you know, you get the boyfriend's uh, words and, and OP says that they really don't think the driver was was in the wrong really that much at all then the sentence in theory shouldn't be too bad on the driver but those other two i hope they actually go to jail not gonna lie because i don't know there was lots of different words that you could put in front of assault there that they did on op now as for your boyfriend slash now fiance i'm happy about that i am because i do feel like he just made a, a fatal error and it was a terrible error the sort of error that you'd really hope not to make at that stage in a relationship but still you could see that this is just not what he had planned at all it went horribly wrong it's a terrible shame but ultimately we're not gonna know guys we're just reading one post and a couple of updates from op it's up to op and if, if she's happy with her decision and has had solid conversations with her now fiance and feels that over the course of their relationship this is just a blip uh, who am i to say no I, I think fair play for sticking with him and not just you know completely getting out of the relationship just from one terrible mistake now moving on to our next story this one originally from r slash relationship advice and there are a lot of updates to come my husband and son both lied to me i am a 34 year old woman my husband is a 36 year old man we've been married for 12 years a few weeks ago my husband said that he has seen another woman handle situations that he didn't think i would be able to handle I tried to talk to him about why it bothered me and he just told me it was a passing comment and that I shouldn't take it so seriously. He said he'd meant to simply compliment her by saying she was handling so much on her own and that he was impressed by it. But I told him it was completely unnecessary and hurtful to compare her to me to compliment her. He told me I was being unreasonable and jealous and that he didn't mean anything by it. After that, he didn't say anything else about it, so I dropped it. Then yesterday, when I came home from work, I saw a pair of women's Fendi sunglasses on our kitchen island, kind of hidden by our fruit bowl. I picked them up and I asked my husband whose they were. He looked confused and was like, aren't they yours? And I said, no. Our older son, 11 years old, is sitting at the kitchen table and goes, oh, those are my friend Allison's. I took them home by accident. I was immediately suspicious. These are very expensive sunglasses. I know Alison's mother and she doesn't seem like the type to let her child bring something worth that much money into school. My son kept insisting they were hers and that he'd just taken them home accidentally on the bus and that he'd return them to her tomorrow. But I said no, that I'd return them to her mother in person so I could make sure they got to them safely. When I spoke to Alison's mother, she confirmed that they weren't Alison's and that neither she nor her daughter owned sunglasses like that. When I told my son and my husband, they both feigned ignorance. My son went from saying that he could have sworn they were Allison's to, well, maybe not. Maybe I don't know whose they are. And then my husband said that he does remember taking the sunglasses out of our son's backpack when he was getting out his lunch stuff. My younger son, who is nine, just came home and recognized the sunglasses. They are Noelle's, the woman my husband helps out sometimes. The one who he told me to not be upset over comparing me to her i'm gonna confront him when he gets home i don't know what to say to him i feel as though i'm going to immediately burst into tears can someone please give me advice as to what to say and also just general advice please 
I never thought I'd be in this situation. Well, before we get into the update and we get the reveal of what exactly is going on here, I'm going to be honest, I don't have too much confidence. I feel like OP is in a world of trouble. And yeah, ultimately, it's very likely that you're being cheated on. As, as much as it pains me to say it and it's going to be a horrible experience for you, I think that's what's going on here. The thing that's absolutely mental to me and that I can't quite work out is why your son is covering for your dad. Like to do that, to actually lie about something like that in the knowledge that you are lying, right? Normally you just say, oh yeah, I don't know who they are, but you're lying for a reason. There's no other reason to lie than to cover up for your dad. Why are you doing that? You're 11. It makes me think that, that surely the dad has been in the 11 year old's ear and told him that, which is even more crazy. Imagine cheating on your wife and then telling your son to help you out and cover up your infidelity. Is that really what's going on here? That's the thing that I can't get my head around. But nonetheless, let's get in to the reveal. Okay, so this was posted just one day after the original. When he got home, my husband admitted they were Noelle's. She's been over there while I was at work. My husband had not realized they were hers. He thought they were mine, which is why he didn't move them. My older son realized whose they were immediately, which is why he lied about them. He knew I was about to find it all out and was trying to cover. My younger son recognized them because apparently they've gone with Noel numerous places on my husband's days off while I was at work. I don't know what he told my older son, but he told my youngest not to tell me about Noel and her son hanging out with them because I would feel bad about being left out because I was at work. What the heck? I returned the glasses to Noel, who seemed horrified. She was under the assumption I knew about their hangouts. I asked her why she thought it would be okay. She looked really confused and told me why would I care if we were separated anyway? Wow. I told her we absolutely were not separated. We were very much still together. Apparently, my husband told her we'd not been together except for cohabiting and co-parenting for months now. I confronted my husband with this information and he didn't deny it. He apologized but said he had developed feelings for Noel, but didn't want to risk our marriage until he knew if they were true feelings or just attraction. He left the house. Noel wants nothing to do with him because now she knows the truth. He lied to her as well and she is furious. I'm speaking to a lawyer today. I'm not going to speak to him again except through lawyers since I don't have anything else to say to him. And that right there is the definition of a modern day rat. Simple as that. Sorry, but uh, it's true. You can't, you can't just be doing that. Sorry, it's actually so crazy that I have to laugh at that sort of stuff. Uh, let me just try and, you know, see if I want to cheat on my wife with this woman. But I'm not entirely sure if I want to lose the, the guarantee of, of having sex with my wife and the comfort of that relationship until I know for sure that I can have a new one. So we're just going to do this as like a, like a kind of like a free trial, you know? You know when you sign up to Amazon, like, yeah, you get a 90-day free, tr free trial, but you don't have to actually pay any money. going to do this with Noelle for a little bit, but um, I can always just go back to my wife if it doesn't work out. Oh, actually, no, I do like Noelle. Um, are we going to jump ship? Nah, let's just do both for a while and lie to both of them and then eventually get found out, thankfully, and both of them have left, which is good because that is what, you know, this guy deserved to have happened to him. What an absolute disgrace of a man um now you know what i thought about it as for the 11 year old kid that is just a tough position to be in i don't blame him at all actually because you're 11 you probably want to keep your your parents together right that's the dumb thing you're not really thinking you know i mean you're 11 right so so you're probably just gonna gonna make up a lie or whatever and, and try and keep the peace don't blame the kid completely blame the dad and again op and noel because you were lied to as well. I'm very sorry that you were put in this truly awful situation. I met my wife's boyfriend and felt like a guest in my home. This weekend, I met my wife's new boyfriend. I have a lot of feelings about her. And although my wife listened to me, she literally said, I don't know how to respond to your concerns. And that ended the conversation. To set the stage, this was not our first time meeting the other's partners. I have met a now ex-boyfriend of hers and she met my current girlfriend. In both of those cases, we went out to lunch in public and had a friendly getting to know you conversation, did a second activity and then parted ways. There was no touching between anyone during the initial meetings. It was just a friendly hinge chat to introduce matters. This weekend, my wife had invited her boyfriend over for breakfast and didn't prep for it at all. She was in bed minutes before he arrived and sent me to the store to buy everything we needed. I said we should go out at that point, but she said she wanted to cook. When I got home, he was already in my house with my wife in the master bedroom while she was getting ready. 
This made me tense because we've never had other people in our bedroom before and my wife had previously marked it as her hard boundary. I was nervous about meeting this guy because we had a three-way phone call a month ago and I wasn't digging his personality. Now I was on edge because of the groceries, because she wasn't ready and because he was in my space. The guy comes out of my bedroom and he's wearing a full suit and tie while I'm in t-shirt and jeans. I perceive this as an odd choice and a power imbalance. My wife later told me he always wears suits, but that literally isn't true because after breakfast, he changed clothes to go on a date with her and ended up in a t-shirt and jeans. So let me get this straight. He wore a suit for breakfast, then changed out of it for the rest of the day. What? We sit down at the table and my wife starts cooking. Already, this is uncomfy to me because the hinge is missing from our conversation. Previously, we sat down at a table together, but my wife was effectively uninvolved in me meeting him for the first time, just occasionally chiming in while cooking. And we didn't really vibe. We'd ask each other a question or two, and then it would peter out until a new topic came up. When the conversation died down, the boyfriend just spews sexual comments, saying that he wants to bend her over the kitchen table right now, that she should stop cooking and do stuff with us asking if we want to jump into a threesome right now etc when we previously spoke on the phone this is part of what made me uncomfy because the conversation was going well until he hyperfixated on sex and any other conversation broke down i had previously conveyed this to my wife after the call but i'm ashamed to say i didn't stand up for myself i have difficulty saying what i want to in the moment I was also trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and I didn't want to be too aggressive when meeting him for the first time. My wife sits down with plates of food and the guy asks if he can sit next to her. We have a square table with a chair on each side. He picked up his chair and sat on the same side of the table as her. Now that was super weird to me and made me uncomfortable. My wife later insisted he always does this. My beef is that it felt like he didn't view this as an opportunity to meet me. He viewed it as a date with my wife and also i was there after the plates were put away i went to the bathroom and came back to them making out in the kitchen this was my first time visually seeing my wife with another person and i was fine with it but then as i started doing the dishes he pushed her down on the couch and fully got on top of her making out and groping her my wife said no and pushed him off so he went to the bathroom At this point, I talked to my wife and said that her boyfriend was making me extremely uncomfortable in my own home and that I wanted him to tone it down. He walked up behind me, having gone in the hall but not actually gone to the bathroom, and said, Don't mind me, I'm not eavesdropping. I asked my wife to meet me in private to express my frustration. She said that this is just how he is. I said we didn't talk about boundaries for this meeting. I assumed it would be like the other two meetings we've had that I explained previously and that many of the things he's done had crossed lines for me and made me feel uncomfortable in my house. She says to give her a minute and she'll take care of it. I return to the kitchen and he's changing clothes. He brought all his clean laundry in a suitcase and was cycling through outfits, asking my wife what she thought of each. I later told my wife that was extremely weird to me, especially since she went out there with the intent to tell him to tone it down. She said the alternative was that she and he go into the bathroom while he changes. Fast forward, they leave to go on their date. I stay busy the rest of the day and can't get a hold of my wife from noon to midnight. I go to bed having asked her to check in three times, called her and no response. At 4am, she woke me up to ask if he could spend the night because they'd been out until 3.30am and it was an hour drive back to his house. I said no because we'd planned a full day, just us, for the next day. My wife went out to talk to him, then came back and said he was too tired to drive and asked me to reconsider. I'm barely awake, so I begrudgingly say fine. My wife promises not to stay out so late again and we go to bed. Boyfriend sleeps in the guest room. My wife and I had planned to go to breakfast, but had to put a pause on that because the boyfriend hadn't woken up by 10 a.m. I say we can get drive through breakfast. And my wife sends me out alone because she doesn't want him to wake up in the house by himself. She tells me he'll be gone by the time I get back. At 10.45, I get home and he's still there. My wife comes down and makes him coffee because we didn't get him anything because he was supposed to be gone already. I told my wife point blank I wanted him to leave because this was our day together and we'd already had to change plans because of him. She said that would be rude and that we still had the whole rest of the day just us. He ended up staying until noon. He didn't say a word to me as he sat at the table drinking coffee 
and then fist bumped me goodbye when he finally left my wife asked how i thought it went i expressed everything i've described here told her his personality made me uncomfortable he ignored me made me feel like a guest in my house i didn't appreciate him spending the night etc 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 my wife said thank you for being honest i don't know how to respond to your concerns it's important to me that you like him i need to think about this and shut the conversation down for now so that we could focus on our planned day i don't know how to handle all of this i do not like this man okay there we go that is it for the original post now everything i say from this point onwards i'm saying in the context of knowing that this is posted on r slash polyamory right so i'm not going to say anything about okay if you don't like him then you should talk to your wife and just try and be with her one-on-one stuff like that it's not worth me saying polyamory is already you know a pretty contentious thing i don't agree with it but you know people like it and, and that's that's up to them you know op and his wife seem pretty content with that and I, i'm not going to argue against that so just want to make that abundantly clear before we focus on this post now in terms of advice that i could give op just off the rip i don't know this guy just seems like an awful bloke but if your wife's into him i don't really know what you can say other than she's being extremely disrespectful by not really listening to your opinion at all i don't know exactly how polyamory works maybe one day i will i doubt it but all i will say is that surely if you are married to somebody even if you are polyamorous they're the person that you have to respect the most i don't know anyone watching or listening that loves a little bit of that let me know in the comments down below if that's how it works maybe i'm wrong however where this story really takes a turn for the worst is in the update i mean not saying it's not weird already but just a month later we got this update with a truly terrifying title everyone met my wife's boyfriend and fears for her safety so a lot has happened since my last post Using the advice I got from r slash polyamory, I set a clear boundary with my wife that I did not want to interact with her boyfriend again and that he wasn't welcome in the house while I was there. I expressly stated how uncomfortable he made me with specific examples. I used a lot of the advice folks gave her and I came to an understanding. True to form, I have not seen the boyfriend since then. But then things got worse. I was out of town for the weekend and my wife had the boyfriend over for two whole days. In that time, he met our two housemates and made them both extremely uncomfortable. He met my girlfriend's parents as well and made them extremely uncomfortable. And he and my wife had loud sex in the guest room at 2 a.m. and kept our roommate awake when she had work the next day. The roommate actually interrupted them because it was keeping her awake. And this was after they'd set a house rule that they'd not do this as it's already happened once before. On Sunday morning, while I was away, I woke up to angry text messages from both our roommates describing what they called serial killer behavior. Both said they were furious and extremely uncomfortable. Interesting to me is they both described the same pretend to go to the bathroom to cover eavesdropping in the hallway thing that I described previously. This made me upset as I obviously want my housemates to feel safe. On my way home on Sunday, my mother-in-law called to say she had Father's Day brunch with my wife and her new boyfriend, and he made the whole extended family extremely uncomfortable, such that they don't want to interact with him again. This was extremely irritating because my wife did not tell me that she intended to introduce the boyfriend to her family at all, which is also my family because of marriage slash estrangement to my bio family. At this point, I say enough is enough. I'd been texting my housemates and called a house meeting as soon as I got home. My roommate, who was kept awake, started by saying, I hate this man. I never want to see him again. I am politely asking that you do not let him back in the house at all. Then my next roommate said something very similar, as did I. My wife asked if we all feel this way. I said, everyone you have introduced them to feels this way. Everyone. Realizing how badly the weekend had gone for everyone else and that brunch hadn't gone as well as she thought, my wife was taken aback. As many people here on Reddit said, both of my roommates said the boyfriend terrifies them, that he acts like a serial killer and that they're concerned for her safety. My wife then said, yeah, that's what I like about him. Okay, that is that is meant that is wow how do you even reply to that we went around stating what he had done to make us uncomfortable and my wife started to shut down she didn't try to defend him she didn't say anything she stopped responding until finally one of our roommates asked if she had anything to say she didn't try to defend him she didn't say anything she stopped responding until finally one of our roommates asked if she had anything to say 
She said she wished we had told her this sooner because she had just said I love you to him earlier that day Which was news to me She asked why nobody had told her sooner and the answer was that he was attached to her hip for two days And he looks over her shoulder to read all her phone messages after a lot of discussion My wife agreed that she would not bring her boyfriend around if anyone was at the house She said that probably means he won't come back to the house at all She also said she wouldn't ask anyone to leave so he could come over and that he wasn't invited to parties Except that she'd already invited him to an upcoming party at our house next weekend And she wasn't strong enough to uninvite him But also that she is afraid everyone at the party will hate him and be made uncomfortable Your wife has no backbone Moreover, she told me that she's going to continue seeing him Now while I understand this, it also made me a little sad Two weeks ago, she'd said that if I ever hated one of her partners, then she and that person could not be compatible. At this point, her best friends, her husband, and her parents were saying that they never want to see this man again and that they're afraid for her safety. And she no longer seemed bothered. I don't know what is going to happen next. I'm sincerely hoping he does not come to the party next week. And my roommates and my mother-in-law have each individually shared that they're afraid he is going to try to kill either my wife or me now yeah i mean sometimes okay (laughs) normally right when i start these like little commentaries at the end i i think a little bit about what i'm gonna say before i i press record right now with this one i haven't done that because i just want to convey my raw reaction like with the, without a second of thinking just immediately after reading this and this is the fact that I, i'm actually completely befuddled uh, by what i've just read and pretty much speechless for maybe the first time in my life you have someone that everyone has said acts like a serial killer but then you're saying you know what that's why i like him now that's that's tough it really is tough to hear if you're op what i genuinely would say to op if you're watching mate i know we go a long way back and um we're both not i'm not going to take the neck out polyamory sorry i won't do that what i will say to you op is uh and i'm leaving that in by the way do you really want to be with somebody who who like who acts like this and says oh why didn't you guys tell me earlier like are you stupid she must be stupid it's so obvious i mean maybe unless she was just completely transfixed by this guy i don't know if someone is hated that much by literally every person you know in your life that should be obvious but unless you are an ostrich and your head is in the sand run that back that's what i say come on man we're not living in the the you know dark age anymore get your head out the sand Are you an ostrich? That is my question. Can I say, actually, if any of you get that reference, then you have surprised me. It's a weird one. It really is. I I just think from your perspective, OP, you have to make that decision yourself now. Do you want to be with your wife if she is the sort of person that is going to continue seeing someone that literally everyone in the world hates and that may well be a serial killer? I don't know. That decision is up to you. As for the story, wow.